All righty. Let's get to it. Uh, Jeremy Cohen, hello, sir. Uh, I'm going to toss it to you in about 15 seconds. But first, for anybody who may not uh, know the specifics of the trade or actually trades, as we will get to in a moment, um, the Knicks are acquiring Bogdan Bogdanovich. Um, Boyan Bogdanovich. Oops. <laughs> I'll, how many times? How many more times? Great start. Boya <laughs> Bogdanovich, the one from Detroit, along with a guy that we know very well and most of us love, uh, Alec Burks, in exchange for Quinn Grimes, Evan Fournier, Malachi Flynn, Ryan Archidiakono, and two second round picks. We do not know the details unless I missed it on the two second round picks. The Knicks had eleven to trade. They now um, have nine to trade. Uh, we're going to have big picture thoughts. We're going to do super chats, all of the stuff. But first, I'm going to toss it to Jeremy with a quick, important detail. Yeah, just the first thing, because this is the most common question that I've been asked about on Twitter. You cannot aggregate Malachi Flynn's salary, but you can deal him separately from the trade. The Knicks broke this up. So it was essentially Grimes, <laughs> Fournier, and Archidiacono for Burks and for um, Bogdanovich, and then they took Flynn, and they would have likely dumped him into what I presume to be the Marvin Bagley traded player exception. Uh, but it depends on the moving parts of this, because I believe that the Pistons also got Daniel House. So they're not done. Have gone into, so there's a lot of moving yeah. around they're, the bottom. All you need to know, yeah. right? All yeah. you need to know right now is that. A lot of moving parts that can be interchangeable because this had no deals have been finalized really. But uh, so we'll see if there's more coming about this. The main thing you need to know if you're wondering how Flynn was lumped into this, it's just the word salad. It, it, they're, se they're two separate deals at minimum. Um, and again, I don't think either of us have had, had time to sit down and actually do the math. I'm like 90 plus percent sure that, uh, the reason why, so if you're like, well, why, if Flynn's a separate trade, why do you need to do it at all? My presumption is that, uh, uh, putting Flynn in a separate deal as part of this keeps the Knicks under the tax, which is something that Jeremy has been all over for, I feel like the better part of two years. Um, because the math works if you just do. Archie Diakono, Grimes, and Fournier for Bogdanovich and Burks. However, I think, I think, I think that would have put the Knicks slightly into the tax, which again, if you, you could be $1 into the tax, it starts the clock on the repeater tax, which again, all things being equal, if you could avoid it for another year, you avoid it for another year. That's um, exactly correct. And yeah. I'll just add that uh, the Knicks right now are sitting at 12 players. You can't have 12 players for the rest of the season. You need to have some sort of other roster spots to be filled. Even if the minimum contracts that the Knicks could sign players to are prorated, which they yeah. are, you st it still counts towards the cap. Uh, so they needed to clear some space. As of right now, if my math's correct, they are around $2.6 million away. Um, okay. Signing a couple, they could they could find ways to stack salaries, but they ha to your point, John, yes, getting Flynn out of there got them out of the tax. You couldn't move him past today because he's an under he's a pending free agent, so it makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, let's go big picture at first. Um, let me start by just acknowledging the reality of this trade, which is that the Knicks got a lot older. Um, but, but, uh, Boyan Bogdanovich is 34 years old. Uh, Alec Burks is 32. I think actually Bo Bogey has a birthday coming up fairly soon. Yeah, he has a birthday. So right around uh, when the playoffs start, April 18th, he'll be 35 years old. Um, and I think that there will be a temptation to look at this trade and say, oh, the Knicks are going for it. My reaction to this is that this is yet another example of something that I think Leon Rose has been better at or as good at as any GM or front office executive in the league over the last bunch of years, which is it doesn't always work out this way, but in pretty much everything they do, it's trying to have his cake and eat it too. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at you're a poet, you didn't even know you rhymed. Um, <laughs> what do I mean by that? Did the Knicks get better today? I look, I, I'm, and we're, I'm, we'll talk about Grimes in a second. I think Grimes still has a super high upside. 
go back and read any of the newsletters that I wrote about Quentin Grimes. I wrote whole newsletters about him over the summer. Like at, at, right after last season, I wrote them. I, I'm pretty sure I wrote multiple ones. I think there's a real upside there. I think he was maybe not in the best place this season all the way around. Maybe there was some bad vibes for whatever reason. And I'll be curious if we get some more reporting on that now that he's out. Um, but maybe it wasn't in the best place coming into this year. Maybe new with the DiVincenzo edition. His days certainly as a starter were numbered. Maybe he knew his days as a Nick um, were numbered with the and he saw how the contract stuff went with quickly and, and frankly, quickly superior player than Grimes. So but that doesn't mean he's not very he's I think Quentin Grimes could be awesome. I think there are w- worlds where he could be a 30 plus minute a night starter on good teams in this league and he could still get better. So it's not like they gave up nothing. And and they gave up their best point of attack defender, which if we're really going to get into the X's and O's at some point, that matters. All that being said, the Knicks got better today, and boy, did they get deeper. And we're facing a situation right now with some – we don't have to we, – we all know the injury uncertainty facing this team. This now, at the very least, helps them get across the finish line in the regular season, and then we'll talk about what the playoffs might look like because, boy, oh, boy – did the Knicks get some gamers here? And yet, and yet, and again, I don't want to diminish Grimes as an asset. I don't want to diminish him as a player. They gave up one young player who is six, five, four, whatever months away from being extension eligible. And they did not give up a single first round pick in this deal. So you want to talk about keeping the, we keep going back to keeping the powder dry, keeping the powder dry. The powder remains dry is it exclusively draft asset powder yes but you know what they got a lot of it and so and and they're and they're are they again are they going for it this year i don't we could get into what exactly that means i think they got better and i think they gave themselves a real chance to put a scare into just about anyone in the playoffs with this trade so i don't love this trade okay i also i also don't hate it Okay. We're a far cry from the preseason, early season, uh, like talk of Bogdanovich for a first round pick, Bogdanovich involving RJ Bear, like all the things that you've seen floating around the internet, which are not necessarily sourced at all, but just like that is what worried me. The Knicks went a very long time without acquiring any player in their 30s. And with the swing of with one swing, they now have two players in their thirties and took away their only other first round draft pick. So we're looking at a Knicks team that now has zero players that they have drafted in the first round, which again, if you're a fan of the homegrown vibe and building on that, that sucks. That, that hurts. I am as a player, like I'm less high on Grimes as a player as you are, I think there is a high floor for him. He is a That's fantastic true. defender. I think the issue, of course, is if you relegate him to a 3 and D role, then he's not going to be a whole lot. I also don't think that he was capable of showing a whole lot more in terms of the creation. Not a very good finisher. The Knicks added shooting today. They added healthy players, even if they're in their 30s. Of the players that the Knicks traded today, the only one, only one of them was a rotation piece and he has been out. So you get Malachi Flynn minutes who should not be in the rotation, which is, um, I mean, they just have had to play him due to injury. And it's not like they could have moved Deuce McBride. He is ineligible to be traded. So to your point, I have no issue with what the Knicks gave up to get these players. I don't really have issues with the players they acquired. They're just not exactly who I would go for with that being said, because the Knicks are always future focused. I cannot fault them for getting a player who can be served as continuous soup this summer where there was clearly interest in some capacity to Bogdanovich. So if the Knicks are looking to flip Bogdanovich and they will be, there has to be some level of interest, right? It's not like, Hey, well, why don't the Knicks just keep Evan Fournier and guarantee his salary next year? Well, because he's not really a playable player. Bogdanovich is. There's a team that could trade for, you know, trade their star. The Knicks would use Bogdanovich as salary filler. And then that mm-hmm. team could flip that player in the same way that Drew Holiday was moved. And I'm not saying Bogdanovich and Holiday are the same player or anything of the sort. They're obviously not. But 
there's that mindset of, hey, can we take this value and get other value and take that value yeah. and then get additional value from that too? So I look at this roster and I see a couple roster spots that need to be filled, likely with prorated players. I would look at guys like Charlie Brown Jr., maybe Jacob Toppin, um, maybe other players that they have. On two ways right now, we should say. They're, yes, they're on yeah. two ways. I, there is There is a possibility that Taj Gibson – comes back of course um he's on a 10 day for right he's now. on a 10 day so this this doesn't affect them but it's not like uh so i guess i should say they're 13 players but they're like 12 guaranteed contracts so i like the move i just i just wish it weren't two players in their 30s but you're telling me that the knicks gave up grimes flotsam and some second round picks that i can absolutely live with of course I think it's all incredibly well said. I appreciate where you're coming from. I think this is the, you know, I've been fond of saying recently, like perfect is the enemy of the good. Um, and the Knicks were in a situation, they were in a way for as much as we talk about their flexibility. I don't, is it too much for me to say they were between a rock and a hard place? And here's what I mean by that. Are they a true, true blue championship contender? Even after this trade, no, you know, I don't know what, what did they have a one percent chance of winning the title before this trade? Uh, maybe does that go up to two percent now? I three percent, I don't know. Like, we, we could sit here and quibble about numbers to me. That's not the point. To me, the point is this group and and really you have to hone in on Jalen Brunson had done so well and performed so much, I think, above what a lot of people thought they were capable of that. I don't know that the Knicks front office had the choice to just be like, you know what? Either we're going to sit this one out or we're going to maybe do a little thing here or there. And then it, then it really comes back down to Grimes. And it's like, cause they, they could have gotten, could they have gotten Alec Burks without giving up Quentin Grimes? Well, the, it would have been dicey with the money because you would have had as you've talked about recently would have needed to sit divert malachi flynn to a, a third team and all likely like yeah you could have done it but i don't know were they getting the impact that they really needed to get them across the finish line and again i want to be specific with my verbiage in this regular season and we're seeing, we're literally seeing drop guys dropping like flies here and i think that the th like is it the most is is the is it the move that the that uh, Leon has made, other than probably the Kemba move, which was ex almost exists in its own universe at this point, other than that move that is the most focused on the present? Yes, it is. It, I I agree with you there. It is the one that is definitely most focused on the present. But again, whether it's continuous suit, whether it's just Bogey being back next year, like. I don't know. I'm looking at his mileage on the tires. Like, yes, he's an older player. Did not come into the league until he was 25 years old. Was not the heaviest minute player. He's played a total of, at this point in his NBA career, 20,000 minutes. Like, that's, for a player of his caliber, that's not actually a lot for a guy who's about to turn 35. That's like, again, I'm not saying he's a spring chicken but to say that this guy is on the verge of like falling off and being a non-rotation piece i don't know that we can i don't know that we could go that far like i'm if, if you tell me Bo, Bo, uh boyan mcdonald which was on this team next year i'd be like okay i i think he could still help us whether it's even at a 15 or 20 minute a night thing um but it really is a move that is i think focused on this season perhaps more than the future other than the continuous soup angle and that's the part that has me excited because I feel like I get to a lot of my fears about how the hell we were going to survive the next 31 games, 31 or 30, I forget how many they have left, have been quelled because like you need Alec Burks to give you 30 minutes. To, it's not tonight because they're not going to be there tonight, but like Saturday, you need Alec Burks to give you 30 minutes on Saturday. Guess what? Alex Burks could do that. You need Bogey to give you 30 minutes on Saturday night. Guess what? He could do that. And that's why I, and I guess my biggest question, then I'll throw it back to you. I wonder how much the the combination of the Randall injury and the recent OG Ananobi uh, news with that it's bone spurs what and what that could mean. Wonder how much that impacted that this move today, if at all. I have to think it maybe, 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 maybe played a, a slight or impact. It did. 
It did because Ian Begley just tweeted a few minutes ago, uh, told that uncertainty slash concern around OG Ananobi injury has factored into the Knicks deadline approach. Heard Ananobi had been making progress late last week, but he's missed games since then. Uh, Knicks yesterday changed injury description from elbow inflammation to bone spur irritation. So, yes, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. Bogdanovich did see time in Europe, so that does add to the mileage. For sure. That's and, a bad but, job by me. I didn't point that but out. But looks looks can be deceiving because when you see a 30, almost 35-year-old balding man out there, you might think like, hey, this guy doesn't have a whole lot to give. But there is. There is room to give there. It would have been very difficult to find Grimes playing time in general. I mean, even, even if we had seen the Knicks get Bruce Brown. Uh, as an example, it would have been very difficult because like, the, I just don't know where the time's going to be when you have a healthy deuce, you have Grimes, like deuce can't be traded. Deuce has obviously been extended because they feel that they could use his salary this summer that went from being, Oh, it's a possibility because Grimes is here to uh, do signed a one-way ticket out. And I, I enjoy your money guaranteed, dude. That's, that's great. So I, but like, I can't, Again, I can't fault it. I appreciate the size. I don't see Bogdanovich playing significant minutes in the playoffs. I think he could see time, absolutely. I, but I, I'd be surprised with the his level of defense to how much he'd be there. But it's to the point of that middle inning reliever. Could you have Bogdanovich as that middle inning reliever? And you have Burks as someone who you trust more in the playoffs. The thing that gives me the most hope with these two players, they take a lot of threes. And they make a lot of threes. And that's exactly what you want if you're the Knicks. And it's why replacing Quentin Grimes, you feel a little bit better about it because you have these players who can do what Grimes does from a shooting standpoint, but also you're adding another one of them. And if you feel for whatever reason, like let's say, let's magical world, right? Julius Randle's healthy and OG Ananobi's healthy and the Knicks are, are doing things. If someone doesn't have it, there's no time to mess around, and yes. now you have the shooting to compensate for it. If Julius Randle has another playoff series where he's struggling to shoot, and Tibbs feels like, well, I, I'm not going to play Obi Toppin, and Josh Hart, we don't have the size, you at least have someone there to scale up with OG, or you have someone, Bogdanovich, who can see spot minutes at that position if you desperately need the shooting – but don't want to give up other portions of it. And Bogdanovich is a good secondary playmaker. So it's not like he's this off ball threat that, that Grimes was Burks. Also, we know that he can make plays. Um, So the two of them being able to be a little bit more versatile. Yes. You're taking defense away, which is absolutely a problem. The Knicks defense got worse today, but for offense and their switchability, their flexibility, their versatility, all of that changed the point where I feel better about it, but still know that they lost something. But as we always say, you got to give to get a couple things. Um, and maybe we'll get to super chats after this. Uh, you, you, you stole my, my thunder with the lineup versatility. And I'm, I was thinking less Julius, if Julius Randall doesn't have it, how about Josh Hart? I always think back to a, a tweet that Benji sent out several weeks ago now where he's like the problem with the Knicks it's again, it's not that Josh Hart is a bad player. It's the way the Knicks are configured, especially after the trade, Josh Hart has to play 30 minutes a night. And in a perfect world, Josh Hart is a guy who, you know what? If Josh Hart's not having a great night, guess what? He plays 20 minutes. Now, looking forward even to the playoffs, what? how, how many guys play in a, in a typical high-level playoff game? Seven, maybe eight. Seven and a half, you know, you maybe get it. Maybe you get eight and a half where somebody gets a few minutes in the first half. Second half, you're down to eight guys. Maybe in a game seven, it's it's seven guys. All of a sudden now, Burks becomes a possibility of like, hey, maybe you're the 0.5. Hart, maybe you're the 0.5, which is unfathomable, right, to us. The guy that's been playing so many minutes, play 40 minutes all the freaking time. Maybe he's the 0.5. Maybe Bogey's the 0.5. To your point, maybe Randall, if he's, you know, if they need a little bit more defense and something's not going right with him. That, that amount of flexibility to me outweighs the defensive concerns because, again, what is your defensive infrastructure? And that brings us back to OJ and Obi. And at the end of the day, like, look, they need OJ and Obi to be healthy because if OJ and Obi is not healthy, then it's they're kind of not up shit's creek, but in, in terms of being able to to win a high level playoff game, they're up shit's creek. But as long as you have him out there for most of the time, you have one of your centers who both have proven themselves defensively. 
like those two, and then you have a third piece, whether that third piece that's a positive defender, whether that's Steven Chenzo, whether that's Hart. Um, I I just still look at Alec Burks as a positive defender, maybe, maybe to my own uh detriment, um, albeit older one, but like you you have all those different options, and then just a, a couple more. Um the I love that you brought up the spacing. We've been talking and, and hemming and hawing about well, if they get Bruce Brown, like how are they gonna play him and Hart together and it's gonna be a disaster and this and that. These guys, I just looked up Bog- I, and oh, that was the last thing. Or two two more things. I sorry, I have a lot to say. And then we'll get to super chats, I promise. Right. Uh this is a proven playoff performer, uh Bogdanovich. Again, hasn't been in the playoffs a ton. The last time he he played in a a, a high level uh playoffs for a high-level playoff team, a team that had real aspirations, was the 2021 uh, run that Utah had where they probably should have gone to the Western Finals, if not the NBA Finals. Um, Shot 43% from three in the first round. Shot 48% from three against a pretty good defensive Clipper team in the second round in that series. Like, this guy has been there. um, He's a guy you trust in a big spot. Alec Burks, I think we know what he could do in a big spot. Think back to game one against the Hawks a few years ago. And now the last thing, and it, 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 you I forget what you said that jogged my memory on this with, with Grimes. I think we were headed for a world where Grimes was essentially going to be the point five in the playoff rotation. And he was just going to be whittled down to a guy who probably played five minutes and a half. If you do the math and you looked at, 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 at how their fully healthy team was going to be constructed like I just didn't see a world where Grimes was going to play a prominent role and if you're then trying to look ahead to the summer and flipping him for value in the summertime now is that a this kind of goes back to the quickly thing it's like do you trade a guy because you you don't you know feel like he has a role here no but it all plays a role it all plays a, a part in your your decision making apparatus so I, I thought that was important as well uh, that's it. Turn back to you. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. I've got one more thing as I, as I do more compelling research. So <laughs> all of that is important. And there's one thing that I will ask you right now, John. Sure. You look, you look at this Knicks team before this trade outside of Jalen Brunson, who is a creation threat? Who is a pull-up shooter that you feel good about? Other than Brunson? Other than Jalen Brunson, I mean Julius is a different kind of creation threat, but not as no, he's not a pull up threat, right? So in terms, if we're just focusing on the pull up portion of it, um, there are 107 players this year who have taken at least 100 field goal attempts via pull up. Would you like to guess where Bogdanovich and Burks rank in the 107? Uh, what was the minimum number? A minimum of a hundred field goal attempts taken purely off of uh, off the dribble. Uh, threes or to- uh, so, uh, well, whatever field goals way. in general, not three. Field goals in general. Goals. Where does Bogey rank? I, my guess would be somewhere in the top 30, 35 maybe. Okay, and Burks. I mean, Burks is shooting the freaking lights out of the ball. I would I would guess that both of them were somewhere in the top third of how how many total players? Hundred and seven. Yeah, I would guess they're both around top 35, top 40, maybe. So Burks is 45th. Bogdanovich is 12th. There you go. And you Burks need, is coming up because he's been hot. You need someone to create offense. That's not what OG's going to do. If you have Randall there, he's very middle of the pack in terms of the field goal percentage that he has. It's not just, hey, let's get off the ball players. It's let's get players that command certain levels of attention where, like, especially Burks's case. You can't go under a screen necessarily, and you can't go over. So which one do you do? So that that like adds another dimension to your offense that you would not have had if you stood pat or even went with someone like Bruce Brown. There's – I don't – other than maybe one small one, and again, just you got to be cognizant of the defense about how who you have out there and mixing and matching might be a little tricky – I'd from a basketball fit perspective, like putting aside the ages of the players and, and any contract concerns anybody might have. I love the basketball fit all the way around. Um, you know, it, it, I'm curious for the, you know, five and a half minutes that Jalen Brunson sits in a playoff game. 
who like I, I'm I'm already fascinated by what what that lineup will look like, um, but I'm I'm not concerned uh, about it. And uh, yeah, great great point. Thank you for looking that up. That's great stuff. Uh, okay, I uh, I believe Andrew has a quick word he wants to say before we go to the super chats. Yes, fellas, and if you just allow me to have the floor for a second, sure, because I always try to bring the heart to these very analytical shows where you guys did a great job breaking down the pros and the cons, but one of our favorite players went out today and I'm sorry, but I think this is what's finally going to break the camel's back. I believe that's the, th the phrase, the straw that breaks the camel's back. And I think I'm out officially on Leon Rose for him to get rid of somebody that's contributed so much on the defensive end in his time as a Nick uniform, the things he's done for Nick's chemistry. I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm ever going to forgive Leon Rose for trading Ryan Archidiakono. I'm just not. This is this is unacceptable. <laughs> and if anybody wants to join me in, I'm, I already uh, ordered the pitchforks. They're going to get here by the time this live stream is over. We're going to go down and demand that Leon Rose finally speak to us because he's never going to do that. But we're actually make him do that outside of 33rd and 7th. Who's with me? Um. Can I say something heartfelt now that you've made the joke out of it? Yes. The moment when Quentin Grimes knee buckled in the playoffs last year and he had the defensive stand on Jimmy Butler. That's, I mean, that's a top 15 Nick moment of my lifetime. I mean, it's, it's up there. Uh, I'll never forget that. That was such a gutty moment to say nothing of then playing 48 minutes in a freaking playoff game. Like Quentin Grimes is, is it too much to call him a great Nick? Like he he gave them everything that they could have possibly wanted to say nothing of everything that you could have possibly wanted from a 25th pick in the draft. I re I'm gonna be I will be genuinely, I mean this with all of my soul, genuinely rooting for him to be extraordinarily successful wherever he goes. Okay, I just had one thing because I also have a question for you guys. You said when his knee buckled. It is an important clarification. It's when Bam Adebayo and one of his illegal ass screens forced his knee to buckle and he still stood upright and was yeah. able to force a steal on Jimmy Butler. Fuck so is he able to be? I mean, you guys know this better than I would. I assumed because he would be waived by his next team. If he is waived by his next team, he can't come back or is it's Archie. Still, there's, it's a reunion possible. Six month rule. Well, the thing is, if he were dealt to another team and waived, then they would open the door. That that's the book. That's the Bogut uh, corollary from a few years ago, right? I think. I think yeah. so. Yeah. So okay. uh, look, keep your eyes peeled. But if the deadline occurs and Archidiakono has not uh, been moved uh, by the team again, then like that reunion isn't happening. It's so if the happen. Pistons release this season. Him, this season. but but i care about this season i want I him know. getting his right. three seconds i want him going on this new podcast like i you're saying that he needs to get traded again by the pistons at minimum yeah it would be very funny though where he gets traded twice in 24 hours and then just shows up to work tonight like hey guys didn't move what's up like <laughs> still oh, lives in happen? new york yeah, yeah. um he was okay. traded twice but well, look, uh, go ahead, sorry. John, go ahead, John. no i was just gonna say like yeah, did they like i don't what are we what are we keep being told about this team? The chemistry part of it is massive. It's massive. So I'm I'm not gonna sit here and like laugh off the fact that Archie Diacono is gone. I'm really not. Um I do think that there was some uncomfortability with Grimes and I who reported uh I think some some reporter used the word disgruntled uh earlier today. I apologize, I forget who. But like I mean, we've kind of heard from Fred. Like that this was this was this has been brewing. And if you read between the lines on Fred's reporting, you could tell that this has really been brewing. Now they kind of deal with that situation. Burks, obviously a guy that's going to fit right in their locker room because he's been in their locker room. And uh, Bogey seems like a, from everything you've heard, or, or I guess maybe more importantly, haven't heard. Like, when have we ever heard anything about Bogey being anything but a great, a great guy in the locker room? Yeah. And the, the one thing, I said this on either a live stream or a watch long, I don't remember, but there was something about the Grimes injury, like Grimes being out. Timing wise, it felt very convenient. It felt like we, and I could be completely off here. I'm, I, I'm fully wearing the tinfoil hat, but for him to have been ruled out of these games before the deadline when his knee might have not been 100%, and then to subsequently be traded, I just saying, there's something feels a little tiny bit fishy, maybe not, but just also a little bit. I think the, 
the medium, the happy medium and in, in whether or not he was actually hurt and your theory, Jeremy, I do think like, I think he got hurt and probably could play through it. But this is when his representation was like, all right, if you intend to trade him, let's wait until after the deadline. He's just out until the deadline. Like he probably is hurt. And they just decided yeah. to go the full measure, like you're saying, and just like, let's see, let's reevaluate you after we know we're keeping you, which obviously they're not. I, 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 I keep, I, how many times have I said last thing? Last thing, unless you I, have anything else, Andrew. No, I, I have one more thing, but I, it'll lead right into Super Chats. Okay. Dante DiVincenzo, Alec Burks, Bogey, OG Ananobi. The Knicks now have four shooters who in different ways are deadly uh og obviously is more limited to the corners in terms of him his being deadly versus just kind of average putting brunson in lineups with any of those three when randall is off the court holy jesus with hartenstein as your as your five hub with the and like again, it, these are not and again, this is not meant to be shaded. Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes is a young player. He's still developing his off the dribble game. It'll get better. But do we have? I mean, talk about zero questions about whether guys like even Chenzo Burks or Bogey could put the ball on the floor and do some real stuff uh, in in the face of a hard closeout. To say nothing of what OG's done here and there um, with his kind of self creation. That is a frightening group of players and an offense to try to stop with the way Jalen Brunson is operating now. And it's just, I, I don't know how you, you're a Nick fan and you're not excited at the very least at the thought of that. So, yeah. Yeah. My only like real reaction to this, and I'm going to just, I don't know if this is betraying a confidence, but uh, I got a text from a friend, uh, maybe a friend of the pot. I don't know if he's a friend of yours, but he's a friend of mine down in Miami who covers the Miami oh. Heat. And he just asked me, like, have the Knicks traded a first this year in either of these transactions? And I was like, no. And he's like, that's just it's an incredible job by that front office. So, look, it's not always a guarantee that you're going to like the deal that Leon Rose may, makes, but it's usually a safe bet that they will be able to make a trade that makes a team better. And speaking of safe bets, since this is a live stream, shout out to the <laughs> fine folks over at Prize Pigs. John, read the sponsor thing, and then we'll head on over to the Super Chats. Sure. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash KFS and use code KFS for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Uh, I can't wait for prizepicks.com again slash KFS. To have some props uh, up there on some of our uh, some of our new players, uh, I will be I will be taking the very first Alec Burks over uh, three point uh, prop uh, when I get a chance to do so. Um, man, I'm just, I'm gonna let my happiness shine through a little bit. I'm really happy about this trade. I, I know you're a little more lukewarm. I'm I'm very happy about it. I'm not like. The more I've talked about it, the more I've become excited about it. If there were a first involved in this, I would have been pretty disappointed. Okay. But again, given what they've received and what they've given up and how it positions them for the future, yeah. I can't fault it. And I'm I'm comfortable with it. I just I just don't love it in the same way that like you know me. I was all aboard the OG train. This is a it's just a different story. But can't all be OG and Anobi trades. It can't all be. I mean, he's the best player that's been dealt this season. So um, until someone tops that, like this is this is a close deal to that as of now. I don't know how many other players that are that much better have been dealt. I'm not saying there aren't any, but I don't know how many there have been so far. If you're someone that has been, you know, pining for the Knicks to like, quote unquote, go for it. And yes, I'm thinking of some comments uh, in the Substack chat to go for it this year. This is about as close a go for it move as was available on the board. Um, and that is with all due respect to DeJounte Murray, who, I, frankly, I don't think would have been as helpful to this team as these two players will be. Uh, not saying he's not an incredibly talented player, better asset, all of those sorts of things. I would rather have the guys that we just got, um, all at, to say nothing of the cost. So, yeah. What also, while we're talking about DeJounte Murray, what does DeJounte Murray do? that like completely outpaces what these players have gotten. I'm not saying is DeJounte Murray, DeJounte Murray a worse, better player. I'm just like, look at what the Knicks got in these two incredible floor spacers who have strong pull-up abilities. DeJounte Murray is pulling up well this year, but it is a very fluky type of thing because his past presence shows that he is a very poor 
pull-up shooter. So, like, okay, we're talking about penetration. Like, is getting to the rim the most important thing? Because Burks can do that a little bit. And also, how much time is DeJounte Murray going to be on the floor where Brunson isn't on the floor? So you're you're already getting who I think is, I think Brunson's top five in drives per game. You're already getting that that dribble drive penetration that you wouldn't need because you have Brunson. So it's it's all about the complementary pieces. In a vacuum, I'd say Murray is a better player. He's certainly younger. His prime is, is uh, approaching. Burks is aging out of it. Bogdanovich is almost 35. So it's not about who's the better player or players. It's just like, what do the Knicks need? The Knicks can afford to be choosy, and at a certain point, fit has to come into play. And how DeJounte Murray fit into this team was a challenge. The only reason that he really appealed to me was the salary portion. And then you have to deal with the trade kicker element of it. With the Knicks, with Bogdanovich, you don't have to worry about that. There's a more seamless fit. You're getting coverage at a key spot, the forward spot, where there's some concerns because you're missing OG and you're missing Randall. So if that's if this is all what the Knicks are able to do to get deeper, get larger, by the way. I mean, we're talking yeah. about Alec Burke, 6'5, Bogdanovich, yeah. six foot eight, six seven. So I, I I hate to think of like, oh, what are opponents that you match up well against? But do I, I feel a little bit better? about going up against Boston. Oh, sh- I feel a bit better about going up against Cleveland. I feel a bit better about going up, up against Milwaukee. Like there are the Knicks getting better and it not hurting their long-term future is something that I have to be happy about. Who, who's it comes down to this regarding the Murray part. Whose hands do you want the ball in? You want the ball in your best player's hands? Yeah. Okay. Well then Murray was not the perfect fit. Mm-hmm. Um, is anyone going to bo- guard DeJounte Murray in the playoffs? Uh, I will see. It remains to be seen. I bet you'll, teams will challenge him uh, if he gets traded somewhere that actually is a team that makes the playoffs. Um, and then it, we, you didn't even mention the thing that had kind of become my hill to die on, which is like DeJounte Murray was never coming here to come off the bench. And uh, I don't know if anybody else has noticed. I have a feeling a few people have that uh, Dante DiVincenzo was turned into Clay Thompson over the last five games. And uh, not this version of Clay Thompson. I'm talking about like prime Clay Thompson. I don't want that dude going anywhere from the Knicks starting lineup. Uh, so, and as far as just the, the size goes, um, I feel like that it's such an important thing. Like, do you, if you're going to be a mediocre defender or a mediocre to poor defender, which I guess you'd probably put bogey in that category at this point, be one that's a big and, and be smart and knows where to be and knows how to operate in a scheme and knows where they're supposed to be and gives full effort. Uh, because if you plug someone like that into a Thibodeau system, like was Derek Rose a great defender when the Knicks got him three years ago? No, he was not. And yet, did we ever watch those lineups? And they're like, man, Rose is killing them on defense tonight. No, if anything, we were like, man, Alfred Payton's killing them on defense tonight, you know, and he's a quote unquote better defender, but Rose knew how to play in the scheme. I trust, we know Alec Burks knows how to play in the defensive scheme, and I trust that Bogey will be able to pick it up pretty fast, too. Two tweets before we turn over the Super Chat contributions. Sure. First is Josh Hart said, uh, boys better uh, hop on that private jet and suit up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one's, I, for as much <laughs> as his boy, uh, his boy from Villanova goes out of this trade, I would, I would challenge you to find a happier individual today than Josh Hart. Yep. And the second thing, this is from uh, NBA Central on Twitter. The Knicks acquired OG Ananobi, Boyan Bogdanovich, and Alec Burks without relinquishing a first-round pick, thus retaining all their picks for a potential superstar acquisition in the summer. Additionally, they resolved issues with Clutch Sports. Jalen Brunson has been named an all-star. Furthermore, Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart are launching their new podcast today, titled Roommate Show. The vibes are immaculate. They are. like when, when you lay it all out like that, it's hard to really find fault. We, we might get our ass kicked by the Dallas Mavericks tonight. But yeah. from hey, that, look, if they like, do, then I win the weekly predictions. So you win some, you oh, lose. Fuck some. you. God damn you, you son of a bitch. Onto the Super Chat contributions, please. But like, how do you really feel? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I don't love <laughs> losing those things. Clearly not. John, this is whose line is it anyway? The rules are made up, but the games don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but still. You're also like five and eight. You should be used to losing by now. And you've like lost two years, years in a row. Really? Uh, I'm going just... for the three, Pete. Have <laughs> you won a yearly yeah, prediction you know, thing? I've won no. every year that we've done it. 
So for someone oh, who John, does, you, you lose a lot. Oh my yeah. gosh. This is great. I really, this is exactly the mindset you want me to be in before we start talking about super chats uh-huh. <laughs> or two super chatters. All right, shall we? On that, on that note. note. <laughs> hate all of you kevin danishevsky what's going on kev great to see you last weekend like it but i'm wondering if bogey gets rerouted for bruce brown by the end of the day a little anxiety about having bogey or burks next to julius and and jalen brunson um I, I i say no i think they're very happy with the situation but we could be wrong well i also say no because the uh the math my dear friend tells us that it would be comp it would be a little problematic like let's say it's it's Bogdanovich flipped and Brown comes back. So that would put the Knicks on the tax with only 12 players on guaranteed contracts. Who would you move out? Obviously, they're not moving Julius Randle or Jalen Brunson. Um, they're not moving OG. Doubt they move Mitch. They can't move Hart. They're not moving DiVincenzo. They just acquired Burks. So they're not going to move him. They're not going to move Hartenstein. It'd be Precious Achua, Jericho Sims, uh, and they can't move Miles McBride. So considering how also the, the lack of depth that they have with Mitchell Robinson out, I doubt that they would put themselves in a position to take on Brown, throw Bogdanovich out, and also toss another center with that two-for-one type trade. They like their depth. It makes more sense that way. So, uh, Kevin, I would be surprised. It would also make them small. You'd essentially be uh, taking Deuce out of the rotation, or you'd be running a rotation that involves Burks, Deuce, and um, Brown, not to say they can't stagger, of course they can, but the pieces aren't quite as seamless. Uh, the size and the shooting matters with Bogdanovich. I, I would, I, I gather they're not going to move him. Again, it all hinges on OG's health, but you are going to, there, there will never be a moment in the playoffs where if you consider our centers to be top-notch defenders, and at this point I do consider both of them to be Mitch and, and, uh, and Hartenstein to be both top-notch defenders, you're never going to have a, a possession where there aren't two top-notch defenders on the floor at the same time. And I would imagine for a lot of those possessions, you're, you're going to have three top-notch defenders. So I, I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Thanks, Kev. Appreciate you. Uh, Hushzu, Leon from Potential Fraud to Masterclass. I kind of feel this was... There's a lot of masterclass vibes seem like going around the internet about the next today. So I think that's, I, and I kind of think they're warranted, um, but we'll see. Potential fraud. What are we doing here? He just traded for OG months ago. He signed Jalen Brunson to the best contract in the NBA. He signed Isaiah Hartenstein to one of the best contracts in the NBA. Yeah. Like it's one off season that went wrong out of four yeah. and one trade deadline out of four that yeah. yielded nothing. Yeah. Like I'm taking a 75% hit rate over a four year span in terms of like years that work, we can talk about the smaller deals and quibble about it. Like I, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to like rake you over the coals here, but like he, he's been good. This front office has been good. They've brought in quality players and built a winning team and retooled on the fly. Uh, it just like, it's, it's consistently been very good. Ain't no one going to want to play this team. Thanks. Hush. Uh, Brandon Collar, what's going on, Brandon? How you doing, man? Sad to see Quentin Grimes and Archie go, but 10 out of 10 trade. We had shooting, playmaking, and depth. Go Knicks. Great job, Leon. Uh, yeah, no, I, no no disagreement with any of that. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate you. Kevin with another one. Also, John, member of the Quentin Grimes. Remember. Do I remember, remember. the yeah. Quentin? Thank you. Quentin Grimes versus uh, Alec Burke debates of 2021. I think I probably phased a lot of uh, those from my memory, uh, but yeah, I, I vaguely remember a lot of that stuff. Um, different players at different stages of their careers. The amount of usage that Alec Burks got in that uh, 21-22 season was borderline indefensible. Obviously, now this is a, a different team in a different spot with different aspirations. I'll add one thing to debates, Alec Burks, all of that. If there's one thing that I feel is very justifiable criticism of how this front office operated, it was it was moving Burks instead of Derek Rose to Detroit in the first place to create the cap space to sign Brunson and Hartenstein. Now, the good news is the Knicks were able to find a way out of it. They got Burks back for a very low cost. 
But if we're talking about like, yeah, it would have been better to do one thing or the other, keeping Burks not moving, uh, or you know, moving Rose instead, because months later the Knicks benched Rose and then he yeah. was non guaranteed and then <laughs> left. Like that's what would have been a, a wiser move, but it didn't wind up hurting them too much. Yeah. It was more of a scratch than a bullet hole. It's, it's interesting though, you know, it's kind of I file that one under everything happens for a reason. Rose had so clearly deteriorated that he was easy to remove from the rotation and all of the players that like got in the rotation when this, that season turned around, like we're, we're, we're happy. Like Deuce got a shot, obviously quickly got started to get more of a shot. So like, there's a, there's a weird silver lining there. And I also just want to shout out James C uh, in the Substack chat here. Uh, can we pour one out for Evan Fournier? Who's been a total pro. I'm sure someone will probably, someone else will probably bring that up, but I wanted to say that out loud. Thanks Kev. Um, how do another one to lethal shooters for Brunson? Ha ha ha. Yes. Touched on that already. I love the shooting that it brings. Sam Garcia, the champagne is in the fridge, man. I, I kind of love that they didn't, not that they were ever going to do this, but like they didn't look at the injury situation and punt on the season. Again, they were never going to do that, but they, I'm just really excited now. You just we just gotta we gotta get to the playoffs. That's it. Just get we gotta get there in one piece. I, th that th that remains as true today as it did yesterday. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Juanan, what's going on? Juanan's been on fire today uh, with all the other all the other sub stackers. Where a traded player exception for Derrick Rose away from getting the band fully back together, fellas. Bogey can play the tambourine. I'm so effing happy. Taj Burks, Brunson, OG Hart, Tibbs has his guys. Let's go to war. Um, okay. I'm not saying that Taj is gone or will be here, but I wouldn't. I would write him in in pencil. There's a reason he's on a 10 day contract. Yeah. Maybe that changes, but uh, I, I certainly would love to see him stay. It just they've got to they've got to find a way to find to fill up the roster spots in other ways because they also need continuous soup with minimum contract players because they're not going to move Taj in a deal this summer. So correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, because of how close they are to the tax. And I think Bobby, uh, our, our friend of the pie, Bobby Marks tweeted it out before the, whether the, the players that they sign, whether those players have many years uh, of service time versus very few years of service time will, will matter, right? It will. Yes, that is, I was actually researching this last night. Oh, okay. thought, well, there's there's a like there's a sense that the Knicks are going to have to do something here. There's also um, I'll have to look it up again, but there is a rule about how actually I have it right here. So this year, the new NBA, uh, this is from Mike Borkanoff. He had a great piece months ago in The Athletic. The new CBA will change the rules on how and when teams can roster fewer than 14 players. Okay. New rules will allow teams to have fewer than 14 players on a standard NBA contract for no more than 28 total days during the regular season and never for more than 14 straight days. So okay. what the Knicks could certainly do is slow walk this just a bit sure. uh, and be able to you know, keep it as is until after the all-star game, not have any depth pieces that they then add. The longer they're able to wait, the better because that minimum salary is prorated this year. That's and as each yeah. day passes, it's less money that you owe the player because <laughs> it's just, that's just how it goes. So I would 2.5 by the, the way, per, per yeah. Bobby Marks below. Yeah. I can, I can tell you right now, if we want to be specific, it's 2,572,995. Um, You're insane. <laughs> Thank you. Drew, two million five hundred seventy-two thousand nine hundred ninety-five. Wow. That's what it is. Talk about a callback. <laughs> I love that song too. There's a dance version of that song that I've like gotten running too many times. Hi, Sue. Uh, oh, it's someone's Keep going up. good. <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. Hi, Sue. Uh, Br Brunson DiVincenzo, OG, Boyan, I Heart injected into my veins. There are so many fun lineups we could construct now. Again, I, I, I kind of touched on it in the opening monologue, but like, Thoughts of, of backup units, like switch everything backup units. Like, again, Tibbs is never going to do it because he always wants a rim protector out there. But just the notion of like, and again, you need guys to get healthy. But like Randall, OG Ananobi, uh, Bogdanovich, 
uh, like Burks and Josh Hart. I don't know. I'm just throwing five names out there. Those are four wing size players. Uh, I don't know. I'd be curious to see what those guys did in a, a couple of minutes. Lots of stuff. Possibility. Mm-hmm. Alex, what's going on, Alex? I genuinely like this move a ton. Clearly, Grimes has value across the NBA. Good work, Leon and Co. Just don't play Burks at point guard ever again, please, Tibbs. Well, <laughs> Alex, you <laughs> might be in for a, a surprise here. <laughs> he's going to see it, time running the point. Uh, he he's definitely going to see time running the point in the regular season again. I'll I'll just, I'm very curious to see because Brunson is not going to play 40 minutes a game in the playoffs uh, for as much as he may want to, and as much as Tibbs may want to play him that many. So, I, I don't know he might like, <laughs> every game. He, he, uh, I'm just I'll look at the the amount of time he played in the playoffs last year, but he he played a lot enough He's where like I that. feel like it's not like we can't rule it out. Okay, so he played nine games. This is oh sorry, hold on, give me a second. Sure. Um, he, in the just in the Miami series, just the Miami series, he played. 40, 39, 37, 44, 48, 45. In the Cavs series, he played uh, 29, 36, 37, 42, 41. So, I, I mean, that is a total average of 40.3 minutes. So I think he could absolutely do it. But the biggest question, of course, was who was going to back up uh, Brunson last year? Weren't a ton of options. We know how that option with Deuce running things for a few minutes went. It sunk yeah, that, that was... game. The margin for the margin of error is even slimmer. But the good news is that the Knicks now have more options to throw yeah. out there. You want more options? That's good. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Greg, film stuff. What's going on, Greg? How are you? Great move. Sad to see crimes go, but the bench is solidified, and now you truly have a complete team. Great five and a really good bench. If New York can get healthy for the playoffs, we will be a tough out. I think that's incredibly well said. Um, just another thought on Grimes because I, I, I'm happy everybody's saying that they're going to be sad to see Grimes go because that's that's real. Um, and I think one interesting perspective on this is like the Knicks outkick their coverage with Grimes as the 25th pick and certainly with Quickly as the 20, I wish we could see 25 or 20, 25, 25, 25th pick. It's still th- those are still two 25th picks that Leon Rose and his regime and the coaching staff, because they re- helped coach those guys up, parlayed into what they have now parlayed themselves into, which is the thing that to me probably as much or more than anything else is stunning to think about is the roster that Rose inherited and the roster that we have now and the fact that all of the firsts are still here to say nothing of some additional firsts. That's just wild, truly. Um, thank you, uh, Greg. Appreciate you. Adam Heitner. What's going on, Adam? Love this trade. What do you think our weaknesses are when fully healthy? Does Deuce play the off-ball guard with Burks or get moved to the bench? You mean basically means out of the rotation. I don't know about you, Jeremy. I'm not even... I'll probably spend a minute thinking about it at some point today. I'm not all that worried about like what is our fully healthy regular season rotation because there's like they do have a lot of guys right now um, because they're just so banged up. It's not only that they're banged up now, like you wanted if you're the Knicks and I'm sure the coaching staff and I'm sure the players, the ability to rest guys and not feel like you have to, like everybody that could like if you could walk, you could play. It's a great mantra to have. I love it. Maybe not the mantra we needed for the final 30 games of the regular season. Um, or like post all star break, so now you you get to uh, like I think Deuce and Burks will probably play a lot together. Um, and in ter- in terms of what do you think our weaknesses are when fully healthy? Yeah, the defense got a little weaker, but they've been the second best defense in the league since January first. It could afford to get a little weaker. Uh, so man, you want to tell me like yeah, they're still not going to have the best guy in a lot of playoff series? Well, all of a sudden now you look around. And you look how Jalen Brunson's playing. I, I'm, I'm taking my chances in a lot of those series with our with with Jalen Brunson. As am I, and I think that their one true weakness right now is that they just don't have another top end talent player. And it's not to that's no shade against Jalen Brunson. Uh, it's more that you need another elite player, 
you don't know what you're going to get from Julius Randle when healthy or if he's even going to be healthy enough to play. The hope is that he, he is healthy and that he plays well. But there needs to be just one more presence that commands significant attention on the offensive end. Because as of right now, I mean, look, I, I think this team could go toe to toe with the best competition in the NBA. But also am I and I know I'm I'm overlooking the East when I say this, but if the Knicks magically, right, got to a point where they're playing for a championship. I don't feel very good about playing the Clippers. I don't feel very good about playing the Nuggets. I, and I don't feel great about playing the Celtics, but I think there's there's more depth at least where it can help you because the Celtics, who I thought made a great trade with Tillman, are still yeah. lacking a little bit in terms of their depth. If one player goes down, they're, they're in a heap of trouble. So uh, it, I, I, but the depth isn't necessarily what wins you playoff games that it can help, but depth is typically what wins you regular season games, which puts you in a better position mm. come playoff time. So mm. the weakness is that the Knicks just don't have the top end talent this year that I think gets them truly into uh, like from a lowercase contender to a all caps contender, but that's mm. okay because they've maximized their avenues without hurting their long-term future in a way that I'm very happy about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks, Adam. Appreciate you. Josh, so focused. I thought Evil Dante couldn't be combined with others. We explained that at the top, so hopefully that was that was cleared up. Again, it's going to be two separate trades. <clears throat> um, Nick D. Simone. Wow, thank you so much for the generous uh, contribution, Nick. Uh, this is actually from my employer. They're paying you instead of me since I spent all morning in Substack. <laughs> love the trade love the content side note deuce better than grimes in my opinion um i don't i don't, I don't want to spend any time dragging grimes name through the mud in any way i will say that i think deuce's emergence seemingly as a shooter that you could rely upon this year has definitely changed the calculation um and the fact that we continue to see these flashes of him putting it on the floor um I guess the one thing I'll say, and um, this is going to sound like I'm going back on what I just said I didn't want to do, but I do think the the piece about Grimes' defense needed, needs to be contextualized in the sense that at his size, yes, he's an elite point of attack defender against like guard-sized players, but that's that's where the elite part ends because I think we've seen enough to know now that you know, unlike maybe a Josh Hart who can, you're maybe not going to love it, but you can feel okay about sticking him on like a Tatum sized guy um, or, or maybe a Jalen Brown sized guy like Grimes. I, I personally feel less okay. Like, I don't think that the, the defensive upside at his position is elite. I'm not sure I feel the same way at this point about the versatility upside, which I do think limits the overall you know what what we're what we're talking about here and uh i love i love deuce defensively that goes without saying they're different players in the they sense are. that i would trust grimes def defense more than i would trust deuces but at this point deuces offense is is making grimes expendable to the point where he's gone and the contracts coming up are certainly a big factor there too but even still the knicks made this choice when they inked deuce to an extension and mm -hmm. kept him yeah, and uh, we said it then. I think we'll say it again now. Deuce remains a nice depth piece, you know, and that's probably what he should be at this point in his career is a nice depth piece, you know, which, again, a guy who can play hashtag meaningful minutes, but maybe you're, you're not relying on. Thanks, Nick. Hush you with another one. Hush you, you're on fire today. Okay, but I'd like to know, does this trade now create the pathway to extend iHeart and OG with the money they potentially want? Jeremy, I'll let you take that. It doesn't have much of an impact. I mean, I the only th I've always kind of written in in truly in pen with the Fournier money, not because it would be going to him, but because it'd be going to someone else. In this case, it'll be going to Bogdanovich. Uh, they they can still bring iHeart back. They can still bring OG back. I'll, I've been saying it for a few weeks. I'll keep saying it. I think there's a very strong pathway to OG opting in and extending, especially if uh, depending on the severity of this injury. But I wouldn't be too worried about how this all goes to play. Yeah. Nothing changes. Co-sign that. 
Hushu, we waited for decades for a monster roster. I think Hushu is excited today. Listen, Good. I don't want to tell people to temper their excitement because I'm as excited as anyone. Um, they 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 got to get their guys back. Still, they got to get their guys back healthy. But it's it's so nice that like the feeling of like how much we were limping into the All Star break was like for me, it was even sixteen and three over the last. 19 games it was like really putting a bit of a damper on my overall excitement for the team so again that's not necessarily why you make a trade but i i don't i don't feel that way anymore so it's just nice. i would gather this happened largely in part due to the positive relations between the knicks and the pistons like they've made trades before they have helped each other out and in fact it often feels like the pistons have helped the knicks out more than the knicks have helped the pistons out although they got them jalen duran so so there's a relationship yeah. here which yeah. leads me to believe that if you're the knicks and you are on the phone with a team like toronto or with portland and you're looking at brown or brogdon uh respectively perhaps the asking prices are pretty rich for those guys and yet if you're the knicks you then go to detroit and you try to say look we have a relationship with you like let's work together and oftentimes that's how business gets done it's between people who have those pre-existing bonds i would not be shocked in the slightest if detroit did not like if they were willing to come down off of a steeper offer because they had that relationship something interesting also speaking of prior relationships um the detroit first that we own not involved in this trade which is i'm i wonder how much that was brought up um but Still, still got it. So that's good. Mm -hmm. M Torts does Bogey and Fournier grade out that different? Oh, I, I think so. God, yes, absolutely, a hundred percent. Evan Fournier was unplayable, and look, I, I'm not saying that's a hundred percent on him. I would imagine going from an everyday starter to yeah. completely out of the rotation, seeing minutes once in a blue moon, doesn't help your game. But Bogdanovich is a is a much better player. It's just. Just, he just is. I I think I feel bad for Fournier, and I I love the flowers that he's getting today for his professionalism over the last two years. And I'm just gonna say I don't think it was as much about Fournier the player as the fit, and I think that has to do with mostly on court. Um, it's just he couldn't his combination of skills never jived with this team when he was signed, let alone as the team has kind of progressed. I think Bogey will jive better with that with in that sense. <clears throat> Thanks, M Torts. Sergio Acosta, what if we were healthy? Boyan and, and Boyan and Birkenbag. Nice. <laughs> Birkenbag. I never heard him called that before. No had I. I don't mind. Yeah, it'll be it'll be nice to get healthy. I can't wait for until we're healthy. Alex, what's going on, Alex? Hello from the land of enchantment. Oh wow, bringing back an oldie but a goodie. Nothing useful to say except thanks for the live stream. Come visit me on Deuce Island at the Dante DiVincenzo pub. So uh, Alex is being a little, uh, I don't know if coy is the word here, because I don't know that there was any household other than maybe Quentin Grimes' household uh, itself that was a bigger fan of Quentin Grimes. And I know that, you know, I, I don't think for like the vast majority of fans, Grimes ever got to the place that, either quickly or RJ got for like different respective groups um, in terms of just like that true real attachment. Uh, Alex, Quentin Grimes meant a lot to Alex. And again, his, his everybody in his, his household, specifically his daughter. So um, yeah, uh, as the Raptors creating uh, Denner, Dennis Schroeder to the nets for Spencer Dinwiddie. Okie dokie. There you go. Jeez. Uh, saves the uh, saves the Nets quite a bit of money and gets Dinwiddie out of town. Um, I, I don't know. Is Dennis Schroeder going to be happy about that? Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. But it's it's interesting that the Raptors are going for cap space now. Well, that's a good one. And that is another. Oh, thought. yeah, because Schroeder signed next year. That's right. I'm sorry. I forgot that. And addition to that, if you're the Nets... Obviously, you wanted to move him out, but Schroeder having that money on the books next year, perhaps they're looking to add continuous soup themselves to try to get a player like Donovan Mitchell or any other star that might hit the market. They have plenty of first-round picks. They need salary. 
next they go into next year also with Ben Simmons's expiring contract. I don't think that's worth a damn, but it is expiring and that's worth noting. Something. Uh good stuff. Uh Rich McLeod bas- basketball improvement didn't fill need. This oh, uh Bruce Brown improvement oh, Bruce Brown. didn't fill need. This does both. Completely agree. Yeah. I, totally for a second agree. I thought breaking bad improvement. And I was like, we're not talking about better call Saul. <laughs> I need to I, watch those shows. I thought show. he said Boyan Bogdanovich. So I'm glad you deciphered that, Jeremy, that the Bruce Brown improvement. I've been racking my brain this whole time wondering what that meant. Oh, well, I, I would assume that's what he meant. But we'll see. No, I think Jeremy nailed it. Bruce Brown improvement. It didn't fill a need. This yeah, I think he's both. actually talking about uh, B.B. Newworth. That's, oh. that's who I think is the option. Which Maybe he's I, a fan I, I of Bobby agree. Brown. It could be. Barry Bonds. Millie, Millie Bobby Brown? Barry Bonds is, is walking in the door. Rich is a baseball guy. It's Barry Bonds that we're talking Barry about. Bonds. Okay. Barry Bonds is underappreciated. I agree with that. Yes. Uh, Shout out steroids. Jamie O'Grady. What's going on, Jamie? How you doing, man? Incredible deal. One, no first round pick out going. Two, tradable salary next year. And three, team got much, much better deeper. Naturally, some concern about health of Randall and OG, but a truly fantastic move by the front office. Yeah, totally. It's like, but again, if you... If if you're if you were concerned about those guys, then you're feeling a little bit less concerned today. And I I do want to say the thing that I like Jeff Stotts put out a great uh, piece on the OG Ananobi injury in which he kind of laid out the likeliest thing, which is like this is the sort of thing you rest and rehab and then you get a surgery in the offseason, which I would imagine he'll do. But he did lay out a doomsday scenario, which is like, look, there have been players who have had to get in season procedures on this. Those those are not season ending type of uh, procedures like, again, the, it would be a little bit dicey, but I think he mentioned one player. I, I'm a, it's escaping me who it was, but that like got a procedure done, like an invasive procedure. And he was back in 19 days and he mentioned uh, once a Nick, always a Nick. Uh, oh, my God, I'm forgetting who the hell it was. Someone on the 12, 13 team. Uh, that was missed 53 days, I think, with the injury. So like you if if it's like doomsday and OG needs to like get something done in season, it, it doesn't mean he's like out until the playoffs. Agreed. Or the playoffs. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Jasso Focus guaranteed Jacob Toppin minutes tonight. I, I mean, he didn't get minutes the last game. Yeah. The only player who would get minutes is DiVincenzo. I'm sorry, Flynn. I called him DiVincenzo. Evil Dante. And Oh, he, yes, but Flynn did play the last game. He did, but that was also because of the injury sustained to Brunson. But, yeah, there's Evil Dante think. played the first half of both the last two games. He was right. a backup. No, it wasn't because of injury. No, I did. Am I misremembering? He no, he didn't play in the second half. He, he didn't play in the second half either. Right? But, but no, I there's seven minutes the out there. The yeah, so maybe you that's know what? what Josh focusing on maybe you are might... Jacob Top in minutes tonight. John might be right. Uh, I mean, can you imagine if Brunson doesn't go? Oh, then we're getting forty Jacob Top in minutes tonight. I don't even. I don't even know what that would look like because Archie's not here. <laughs> Oh, why'd you have to remind me? Now I'm mad at Leon Rose again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Hushzu, Celtics, Cavs, Bucks, we coming for you. Ah, uh, I mean, the race. I I think the Celtics have put enough of a distance between themselves. (laughs) What? (laughs) You heard it too, Ah. Jeremy. (laughs) Ah, Can can I get you to read that? I I want you to read that again. Just please. Celtics, Cavs, Bucks, we coming for you. Ah. It got even better. I, I imagine that a Precious Achua roar that happened in the Pacers game. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Okay. I, I, I tried, everybody. We got what we got. Uh, you got what you got. You're going to like it. Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, is going to Toronto, and Thad Young is going back to Brooklyn, according oh. to Jake Fisher and then Adrian Wojnarowski. Um, huh. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, Additionally, okay. just real quick. Um, so Bobby Marks tweeted about the Knicks salary. Ian Bagley said Knicks still have their biannual exception, which allows them to offer a multi-year deal to any buyout Damn targets. It. That's accurate. Yes, the Knicks would be limited to two seasons. The first one is this one. The second one is the next one. Uh, the Knicks are already hard capped. So I, again, I don't expect them to go this route. And then Bobby chimed in saying, but you would prefer to keep that until the 2024 off off season, use it now and not available in July, which is true. It's called biannual because if you use it one year, you can't use it the next. 
But the thing to keep in mind is that if the Knicks do go the biannual route this year or next year, it would cap them because it hard caps them at a certain level where I think they might want to go above. So I would not expect them to use the biannual. I'd be shocked if they use the biannual this year. And I would be very surprised if they used it this summer. It's $5 million or whereabouts? Somewhere along those lines. But I think the other factor is if you have Alec Burks' bird rights, which the Knicks would, then you don't necessarily need to bring in a biannual player because yeah. you've got Burks. Perhaps you also can, I, you know, if you had to move uh, Deuce, then like, is Rokas coming over? Are you able to fill in the gaps eff- effectively where you don't even need to do that at all? The the fact that they have now set themselves up to, as you're kind of going through, not need to use any exceptions and thus go above the hard cap if they need to next season, that's that's pretty notable. Yeah, I know that Burks is an expiring free agent. I'm not saying he's continuous soup because he, he cannot be. He can't be extended either. But having his bird rights and trying to work with him, especially if the Knicks make a big move, that's huge because the only other way you'd get Burks would be through an exception, which could hard cap the Knicks or a minimum salary, which he's worth more than that. So the Knicks retaining his bird rights is a very important factor that I think has to be considered here. Sure. He's also, he's, is he CAA? He, right? No, he's, he's Octagon. He's not. That's right. He's Octagon. Okay. So. No um, thanks. Hush. Uh, Fernando Paz Martin. First, Obi, then IQ and RJ, and now Grimes. All picks gone, except Deuce and Sims. Sad to see this group broken up. I think a lot of fans, this is a, a sad day in that respect, but you you ultimately, you ultimately, I think, like, why do you hang on to homegrown players? Well, part of it is financial. Like, you want to grow your own players because the draft picks are cheap for the first years of their four years of their contract. Well, the Knicks got a lot of use out of their rookie contracts. Knicks got a hell of a lot of use at IQ's rookie contract. Um, Grimes for sure. Even Obi. Um, and then the other part about drafting your own players is that it like the draft is still the best Avenue to acquiring star talent because it's really tough to get stars away from other teams. Like none of these, I mean, with all, you know, we could quibble about quickly, but like I, None of these guys were franchise changers for me, at least that that's my, that's my personal opinion, but yeah. No, well, the players they received were pretty talented. Yeah, that too. You, you, and you got to give to get MD HDZ. uh, What do you think the rotation looks like now? Uh, I guess we could do, do that. You want to assume everybody's healthy. Uh, We could do it real quick. So I think it's going to stick with a nine man. So let's say uh, a, a fully healthy rotation, same starting five. And then Hardenstein backup five, or excuse me, Mitch will be the backup five. Um, I guess until Mitch is back, Precious backup five. Um, I know uh, DJ and Benji had an interesting discussion about whether it be Precious or Sims the other night. Um, I would say Precious. And then Hart, Bogey, Burks. Hart, Bogey, Burks. That's it. And then so probably Deuce is out. Deuce would be the 10th man, right? Yeah, so I'm imagining. Yeah. In case of injury, he fills in foul trouble he comes in yeah. but he's not going to see time really in the playoffs much anyway i don't expect tibbs to give him much time um yeah absolutely um thanks good question good thing to probably get to ja i'm with jeremy not a home run swing but a fine move ig yeah i don't know what ig means i guess oh i guess i can't decipher any of this stuff i know that's, uh, that's why uh, i'm here Hush is back with more. Y'all think Boyan eventually starts over DiVincenzo? Hell no. No, 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 no. He's not, he's not a two-guard. You know? No. He's, yeah, he's not a two-guard. They're not going to break that up. No. Um. Thanks, Hush. Thanks for all the chats. Yes. Do you think he starts over Precious for now? That's an interesting question. Yes. 100%. I hope so. Yeah. Because Tibbs doesn't love playing two bigs who don't space the floor together. Mm-hmm. It was circumstantial. Randall's out. We don't have a, another four. You can get Bogdanovich to be a little bit more versatile. So I would imagine the day one starter, let's assume Brunson and Hart are healthy, that we're going to see Brunson, DiVincenzo, Hart, uh, Bogdanovich, and Hartenstein. And then off the bench, Burks, Deuce, 
Achua. I mean, are they going to go eight though? Maybe maybe they'll do spot minutes. I don't know. I, yeah, I I don't know either. But I think yeah, from just from the top down, I think it makes a lot of sense for Boyan to start. John, are you still doing the putback? Is that still happening? I believe so. Okay. Um, Why? Would you like to go now? And I mean that in multiple meanings. If you give me, if you give me thirty seconds. Yes. Okay. okay. John will be right back, everybody. So I, I, you'll. Thirty seconds. John, John will be right back. Is what I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just filling in for a second, Jeremy. I'll, I'll, I'll text you when you're answering the next question. Thank you, everybody. We have 1,600 people watching live. We genuinely appreciate turning in for this emergency live stream that became our free agency live stream. Let's keep it going in the super chats, Jeremy. Just so focused. Uh, ultimately, we waited this long to trade Grimes for Burks and Boyan. This deal was always out there, and if you were going to do it, then you should have sooner. I mean, it. it so what does sooner mean? Like the only trade, the only seismic trade that really happened this year was the trade the Knicks did bringing in OG Ananobi. It's it usually comes down towards the deadline, and the Knicks were playing multiple different options. Like I'm sure that they, I doubt that this was their first priority, but they had to play the game. Other teams had to be willing to trade them. I'm sure that the Pistons held out longer to see if they could get more out of these two players. So I, it's not that the deal was always out there. It's more like, what were the circumstances of the deal? And now on deadline day, they finally came to a resolution of let's get this done. I agree. Also, um, didn't Fred said this before, like a lot of trades get made on the last day, like at the very last moment possible. Yes. There's a reason that this day usually coincides with all the trades. So yes, this trade might've always been out there and this is when all the teams usually decide to make the trade. So, and the thank OG you. trade itself was a deadline move because of his player option, ex opting in extending six months later, like that, that was an inherent deadline. It just wasn't the trade deadline. I agree. Welcome back, John. Thank you. You are muted. Now you're back. Now I'm not muted. OG team. Do we trust teams with 10 plus playable guys? LOL. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to take that. Uh, I I don't think he's going to expand to a 10 man rotation although like why not? I don't think he's going to expand to a 10 man rotation but to OG's you know, question like what was the rotation when he first got here? That was a 5 on 5 off. Yeah, it, it was a hockey shift. You know what? I'm going to go back on that. <laughs> I mean, eventually cost them. That's why the second year was was so frustrating, but then when yeah. as quickly got better and other guys got better, he went to a 9 man. Yeah, and the bench unit that those years were fantastic. It's just the starting lineup, the mixing and matching, it had to be done. I just don't think that there's going to be a 10-man rotation. If there's an injury, then you'll see more Grimes or Deuce. If there's more foul trouble, you'll see him. It's less about being trusted. It's more, I just don't think he's going to make a concerted effort to play 10 guys. Yeah. I... It wouldn't shock me. That's all. It just wouldn't shock me. I, I'd Pistons be surprised. Are, Pistons are waving Joe Harris. So that was, uh, would you say that that was worth a couple second round picks this year? I would not. I think that was a pretty failed uh, move on their part. I mean, creates a roster spot. Questions about what the Knicks or what the, what the Pistons are doing are many. They won last night. I know. They did. I know. Kings. Surprisingly enough. The seven and forty nine Detroit Pistons. Probably Solid. not. Probably not a great morning to be a, a Kings fan. Uh, M Torts not giving up any draft picks is masterclass. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, they I, the the fact that they're hanging on to all these protected firsts, especially, is so interesting to me, and it makes me wonder. And a lot of other people have have posed this theory, but like, is part of the plan like okay? we get rid of all of, if we, we have to make a trade that sends out all of our future draft equity, right? Future swaps, future, future first, the whole thing. Well, at least we still have a pathway to adding young talent on the cheap, which we're going to need to do in terms of financially. What, what, what say you to that? Well, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be how they go about it. Like, I think they're going to look for a deal that features some of their unprotected, but also focuses on the protected picks because the protected picks a year ago, there was a lot of uncertainty in terms of when they would land. And now we have a better idea of it. That Mavs pick 
it's going to convey. There are enough bad teams where the Mavs are in a position where their floor is higher, so the pick will be yielded. The Bucks pick, we know it's going to occur in 2025. We don't know yep. if it's going to the Knicks or the Pelicans because the Pelicans own it if it's one through four. It's the Pistons pick where they're opening up all this cap space to try to re recruit talent. So they will presumably work to be better. They probably won't be a good team next year, but they will show signs of life to the point where I feel like that pick probably conveys two years from now. And the Wizards first, which is more than likely just going to convey to two seconds. Uh, so we're looking at really probably three first round picks and two seconds, but you can map out those picks pretty well and forecast that Pistons pick of like probably 2026, maybe 2027. But based on the protections of how that Pistons pick works and how the Pistons are building as a team, it mm -hmm. will convey. It's just a matter of which of those two years do you feel the most confident that it would convey? I, I think this is a very good day for the Pistons pick. I, I already felt good about it as we've talked about it before. I think it's a good day for the Pistons pick. They um, opened up so much yeah, more cap space, I know. by the way. Which, speaking of opening up cap space, just want to say, yeah. do a wind horse. Why... Why would the Thunder create cap space and potentially max cap space for a player earning 35% of the salary cap while having multiple picks in this year's upcoming draft where a certain someone has a, uh, a spawn, uh, also known as a human, uh, a, a son, if you will, who has the same name as uh, as said player who could be available there is a perfect window for the thunder to poach lebron james and draft Bronny while still having sga chet and jay uh, jalen williams am i saying it's likely i don't know but they're gonna give the best damn shot that they have and here's the craziest <laughs> part even if lebron does not leave the lakers this year because of how the salary works the Thunder have another crack at it the next year after LeBron's player option is done. So LeBron could say, Thunder aren't quite ready yet. They need another year of seasoning. I like being in LA, you know, and then they could still sign him with SGA on a max deal with Williams and Holmgren still on their rookie contracts. Like the vision's there. So any thoughts yeah. in general of like, oh, look at the Knicks trade for LeBron. Like we'll explore it. I'm not going to say they're nil, but Man, Presti has done quite a good job of of creating a fantastic team with young talent that's on the cheap and creating monster cap space to go get one of, if not the greatest players of all time. Yes. <laughs> Why would they? Do this that? year, or next year. <laughs> Andrew, we're good. It's yes. one o'clock. Do you have to go to the putback? No, I, for the putback, I said I have to go on at uh, two thirty. Oh. You had said one o'clock earlier. Okay, yeah. never mind. Jesus, never mind. You're just exposing John for having to use the bathroom, huh? I had to pee. I yeah, mean, now that fine. now that everybody does it, you know yes. just for that, I'm gonna eat a nut. That, oh, no, I know because yeah, he's yeah. annoying because he's gonna be chewing into the microphone and it's gonna annoy me. Okay. Oh, I thought yep. it was gonna be a, a that's what she said thing. But anyways, we. Nah, I mean, it works that way too. You Absolutely. heard it here, folks. I don't know how I deal with this immaturity. Who's John Haywood, while you, while you eat your nut, this isn't cream. John Haywood, John Kaywood, Lowry buyout ad would make this an A plus deadline. I don't think there's a need for Kyle Lowry at this point because of having Alec Burks. There just wouldn't be the minutes. I would expect Lowry, if bought out, to go to a place like Philly, to go somewhere else where there's playing time and room and a team that's actually going to focus on winning games, which of course the Knicks are, but I just don't see a fit here. And very quickly, the Hornets are trading P.J. Washington to Dallas for a package around Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first-round pick. They only had one left to trade. The, I... Yeah, that's um, – I'm sure it will be heavily protected, but – It doesn't matter. Is... They don't, I mean, well, it does matter, but, like, they're out. They, they, it's going to be probably their 2026 first-round pick. And – uh, we... First or no, first. actually, it'll probably be their 2027 because then it frees up them to use their 2025 in a trade next year. If it's not that pick, then they're in even more trouble. But I just wanted to give 
a shameless plug to the pregame pod to Kirk Henderson, Kirk, who runs Mavs Moneyball, who said, like, this is the only trade I could see happening. And I don't think they're going to part with their first because then you've completely wiped your cupboard when you're trying to build around Luca, which could then lead to another domino. So shout out to Kirk and shout out to Mavericks fans. And thank you for giving me a reason to laugh. It's and no Grant not- Williams tonight. Right, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's which not just that. It's not just that. You want to talk about the opposite of the Knicks approach? The Mavs gave up to it to salary dump Reggie Bullock as part of the Grant Williams sign and trade and unprotected, unprotected 2030 for I think it was 30, right? First round pick swap because that's what sent I believe it sent Bullock to San Antonio's cap space for that. Yes, it is a pick swap. Yes, it's for San Antonio. I don't give a shit that it's a pick swap. You have opened yourself up to disaster. And if you don't think a pick swap could come back and bite you in the ass, go at Go ask a guy who was just a guest on our show. Not recently. He knew it as he was doing the trade because he was had dictates from on high. It was not his fault. But yeah, go 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 talk to the, anyone with that uh, Brooklyn organization at that time for I mean, see if pick swaps can come back and bite you. And they use that to get Grant Williams, who they now shuttled out the door to get PJ along with additional first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but here's the bottom line, though, John. Um, future governor of Texas, Mark Cuban, isn't going to care about this at that point because he'll be very busy in his second term. So it's fine. He's not going to it's not going to matter to him. But I agree with you. It's it's a terrible process. And I think this is the Awful. most important difference between the Knicks and the Mavs is that the Mavs have the type of player that the Knicks would covet. And uh, that's not shade of Jalen Brunson because obviously the, the Knicks poached Jalen no. Brunson. He with is fantastic. But like, but, right, but like yeah. ideally with that player. The, so like if you were to trade, if you were to swap Luca onto this roster and then trade the assets to the other team, like we'd be looking at one of the best teams in the NBA and then one of the worst teams in the NBA. But how you build teams, one team that got a star arguably too early, even though I don't think there's quite such a thing as that. But with LeBron James, you could, you could see in the Cavs days, like he was so good that they probably could have used another year or two, but they just didn't have it. Um, or if they had started the rebuild process a year or two earlier or whatever, like they had that talent, it would have propelled them. The Mavs are in a similar position. Mavs keep building to like they first made a bad move with Porzingis and then they've been making other bad moves to try to center themselves. But they're like once you make that type of move, you're screwed. It's it's almost impossible to get out of it when you're playing catch up. And the Knicks perspective is we're just going to wait. We're going to keep waiting. We're cool waiting. We're building a functioning well-crafted team and we're going to keep waiting for that star and when that star comes about we'll be ready but when you look at the difference between the two teams where Knicks fans like craving Luka Doncic it's it, it, but yet you have Mavs fans that have Luka Doncic that would crave probably what the supporting cast the Knicks have it feels like a grass is always greener type of situation um I, I'm curious what the verbiage here means but Dallas is sending a lightly lightly protected 2027 first round pick in the deal. So uh, Mavs are going all in on two things here. One, that Luka Doncic is not going anywhere for the foreseeable future, because if he's not, then you don't care as much about what your protections on your firsts are, because, again, Luka's going to be here. We'll see if that works out for them. And um, the other part of it is they're going all in on offense, because, like, PJ PJ Washington is a wonderfully tantalizing player. What? Top two protected. Oh, Oh my. And two second round picks. Ooh, okay. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> PJ Washington is tantalizing. He's a tantalizing player. He could do a lot of things and give you like uh, the appearance of versatility. You're not playing him at center if you hope to stop anything, uh, especially with the other players that the Mavs have on their roster. Like you want to talk about, do not not having the defensive infrastructure to withstand playing a guy like PJ Washington at center. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, that's fine. We can still play PJ Washington at the four. Well, here's the thing. If you're playing PJ Washington at the four, it kind of neuters what makes him special, which is the fact that he's a floor spacer and he can put the ball on the floor and do a lot of different things. So it's like one of those moves that again on paper, it's like, oh wow, PJ Washington. He'll, you know, talk about a guy who'll fit in great and this and that. I guess they're counting on winning a lot of games, you know, 135, 132, which those games could be tough to win in the playoffs. 
Um, but we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. I also believe that the Mavs have two, maybe three second round picks in the next seven years. Oh, I, yeah, they had none to go in. Well, they had almost none, and now they have even less. They have, today. Yeah, it's yes, they had to trade the 2027 first, but right now you enter next year if you're Dallas, you assuming this pick conveys to the Knicks, you've got the 2025 first offer and the 2031. So you're largely set. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room that you can do. So I hope that they are happy with this addition because there's not much that they're going to be able to do after that. This is except for swaps, but the swaps will be valuable because they probably think, eh, we're probably screwed later on. So we might be able to get something out of it. This is not only is this their team, the two players that you would have said going into this year, um, that were counted as young. I saw, I'm sorry, we're diverting to talk about the Mavs, but they would have counted, uh, counted as intriguing young talent. One, Jaden Hardy, who had a nice year, uh, last year, is out of the rotation. And the other guy, Josh Green, was reportedly, I've, uh, again, I apologize. I don't know who to attribute this to. I feel like it was one of the Knicks beat guys. I may be wrong, but ap- apparently they tried to send him to New York as part of a package to bring in Quentin Grimes. So I don't know how enamored they're they are with uh did i say josh howard i mean green josh josh green um yeah it was a nice player but yeah yeah interesting tidbit as we talk about picks the mavs somehow acquired the second least favorable first round pick in the 2024 nba draft uh with the rashawn holmes for daniel gafford trade so they're like i i like gafford i like pj i don't know if i like them together on this mavs team but it's not as horrible because they're getting a pick in this draft and they're adding some young talent. So it's a little bit better than what we just talked about, but it's, uh, I mean, I'm glad just, I'm not the Mavs. It's all, I'm glad this is the Mavs. I'm, I'm, I'll be watching. I'll, yeah. I'll be, we, we will be watching from afar. Literally. Tonight, uh, we'll be watching. We will be literally watching this team tonight. Uh, Chad Cohen per Josh Hart, boys better hop on. Uh, the private jet and suit up, haha. Otherwise, he's playing forty eight tonight. LOL. I, th- I mean, there is a real part of me that like I don't even know how they would punt tonight. Was, if they punted to the game tonight, does that mean Ty Gibson's playing forty eight minutes? I like. I hope Sims so. will be back. So at point guard, <laughs> point Taj. Get point Taj. Yeah. No. Well, whatever. The Knicks don't punt games. Uh, thanks, Chad. Ryan Huang, what's going on, Ryan? When fully healthy, this team has an incredible starting five. Now with Burke's heart, bogey, center, deuce. If needed, coming off the bench. Screw the summer is the second round of the playoffs. Now the floor. Um, I can't I can't say that in good conscience today, even after all this, if only because, again, Andrew is shaking his head, I'm sure, behind the scenes. I just have a lot of respect for the other teams in the Eastern Conference. And that <laughs> Jeremy's also rolling his eyes. Have some damn self-respect, sir. I do have a lot of self-respect. I, but this is a brutal East. I, I something I've been meaning to do, and I haven't had time to do, but I'll do it after this. Is when's the last time that we've had uh, six fifty-win teams in the East? Now, I think the Embiid injury obviously makes that much more unlikely. I don't think it makes it impossible. Um, at the very least, when's the last time we've had five 50 win teams in the East? Like there's a lot of good, there's a lot of talent in the Eastern conference right now. Put it this way. If the Knicks get the three seed, then their floor should absolutely be the second round. If the Knicks get the four or five seed, then like, we'll see. As long as it's a hard fought, extremely competitive series, I can live with it. You're looking at me perplexed, though, Andrew. Why? Not you, the guy that me. said he jumped out the window and said he was still afraid of the Pacers. But, but again, oh, okay. you're, you're putting me in a position to say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding when I say this, but you put me in a position to say something and then have to go back on it. But I, I like, look, are there universes where something happens and the Knicks lose in the first round and it should not be viewed as the complete apocalypse? Yes, I think there are worlds where that is the case. Um, not saying it's likely. I'm not saying, you know, but like, here's my my viewpoint here is like, to me, now the Eastern Conference Finals no longer seems like some pie in the sky dream. Not that it did yesterday, but with the injuries, it was kind of starting to feel a little pie in the sky ish. Now I'm like, fuck yeah, we could make the East Finals. Why can't we make the East Finals? That's I'm I'm more emboldened on the ceiling. I'm just always thinking about with the floor. 
uh, considering the other talent in the East. That's all. That's all. There's a there's a middle ground there. It's not high in the sky or the apocalypse. It's that this is a very talented team that is also in a talented conference. But I like their chances. I really like their chances when they're healthy, and they got better. And I look at how they have operated when healthy since the Cavs series where they destroyed the Cavs and the Cavs have done a great job this year, but they've also had a very easy schedule and they've won the games that they've needed to. And that's important, but like we have to consider the fact that Boston has even looked a little bit shaky. They've lost three home games in the last month after losing, not a single one, the bucks. I mean, do you trust doc rivers right now? Conveniently the last five games that they've had, Four of them have been losses. The one win was the best one. It was against the Mavs. But Doc Rivers was blaming the road trip and the altitude and the timing and all the things that don't involve him. And he could have just been like, well, hey, we're trying to figure it out like, and leave it at that. And I have so many more questions about other teams than I do about the Knicks, which the only question yes. I have with the Knicks is, are they going to be healthy enough? That's it. And if they're healthy enough, I feel great. So I, I'm with Ryan. I don't know if Ryan's asking this or stating this. I mean, it's a question. So I'll take it as a question. The floor should be the second round. It just, like, it should be unless they battle up against another top five team. And it's a very hard-fought series. And the Knicks don't come away victorious, in which case I'm like, again, there are five really great teams here, or five good teams here. The minimum should be a hard-fought series. If you're going to lose to the six seed, it's a failure. At this point, it just is. They've made too many upgrades this year Fine. Yeah. for that to not be the case. I, I'm not disagreeing with that fact. That should be the expectation. Uh, to, I'm just like, do I do I think it's that we could pencil ourselves in? That's how I was taking the question. Can we pencil or pen ourselves in to the second round? And that's where I'm like, Hold like imagine we face Philly in the first round and they get him beat back for the playoffs. Like there's all kinds of crazy scenarios. I'm not again. I'm not saying we can't beat that team. Absolutely beat that team. Probably be favored against that team. I'm just, just exercising some caution. That's all. Jeremy, remind me when we log off later to refax him or re-email him, whatever old technology he wants to use. The rules and the handbook for jumping out the window. That. There's no like, oh, we could lose to this team that doesn't play defense in Indiana or this depleted team in Philadelphia that's probably going to break it up this offseason. Or the Miami Heat, who, oh, they're th- four and one in their last five. We should be afraid. Beat the Spurs last night. Here's how I imagine that going, Andrew. Oh. It's uh, <laughs> Telegram. Like, yeah. Yes. John. It's more It's Morse stop. code. <laughs> Listen to me. Stop. 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 Okay. The you. Titanic. Stop. Has sunk. Stop. The Knicks, hey, listen, stop. To listen to you, John. Are good. Stop. Don't you see? This is a good team. They got great players. Okay. That was, that was great. I'm All picturing right. the I'm picturing the the delivery boy. I'm picturing the delivery boy at the end of Back to the Future 2 who delivers the note from 1883 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Get your paper here. Mm-hmm. Five cents. That's, that's we're, having, we're having some fun. John's now. actually in Newsies. The original. <laughs> Newsies I saw that movie. Off of John. Never saw that movie. Yeah, I need to see that. All right, let's let's keep going. Mythic Monty marks two spots and two point five million below the tax. Uh, Hayward Lowry again. No, that that's it's. First of all, I don't think Howard, Hayward's being bought bought out. Um, but I mean, anything's possible. Um, and nor should he. Gordon Hayward's a good player. Gordon Hayward got traded today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I'm taking this as the possibility of that he would get bought, bought out by OKC. Which yeah, I don't think it's happening. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'd be surprised if we they ended up with Lowry after the moves. Agreed. Job with another one. Last point. Traded a guy who defended the other team's best player to start the year for a guy who barely plays and Alec Burks. Sorry, I can't get excited. for Traded for a guy who barely plays and Alec Burks. Bogdanovich plays. Bogdanovich is like, there's... Plays a lot. Bogdanovich is Detroit's best player. I don't know what I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah, no, he plays a lot. He's he's a very useful rotation piece. And like, um, I'm all uh, Boyan played 28 games and is injured with a calf injury. Uh, I, I get that Boyan is not the picture of health himself, but it, again, you're you're kind of um, um, what is this called? Arbitrage, right? 
where you're kind of covering all your bases. Like, yeah, you bring in another older guy who's not the picture of health. You're adding him to other players who are currently injured. I think between the the lot of them, the Knicks will have enough healthy players um, down the stretch and and when playoff time comes. And it's just as far as Grimes' defense. And again, I hate to have to do this because like it sounds like I'm shitting on Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes at this point is a, a top what defender on this roster. He's not as good as OG. He's not as good as Josh Hart. Um, he's, I don't think he's. I Frank. I don't think he's good, as good as Deuce, as Deuce McBride. I think there you can agree to disagree on that. No, with Grimes, yeah, Grimes no, versus the, number, Deuce. the numbers grade out far better with Grimes versus Deuce. Like okay, a, so give so give. Like we're, we're talking about someone who's a very good point of attack defender in Grimes yes. and had high matchup uh, difficulty, and Deuce just mostly against bench players. Yeah, and they also and less, they didn't. They didn't need a guy to, to guard the opposing team's best player because they got the best guy in the entire league at that particular skill. His name's OJ Ananobi. Thanks, Joe. True statement. Possible we keep Taj on the roster? Uh, yeah. Uh, Jeremy kind of explained this before. Taj can be to us as Udonis Haslam was to the Heat. I mean, a little bit different because UD was a Heat lifer, but uh, I, I don't ever want Taj to play or work for another organization. That. Trade that came in, by the way, is Royce O'Neal going to that, Phoenix. Yeah. That's a that's a big deal, and I'll tell you why. If you are a Knicks fan holding out hope that the player the Knicks acquire this summer is Donovan Mitchell, yeah, the Cavs are very interested in Royce O'Neal. Royce O'Neal and Donovan Mitchell are extremely close. So for the Cavs not to get someone they're close with, I'm not saying it puts him over the edge by any stretch, but it certainly makes it easier for like there's a less comfortable environment. Yep. Well said. Thanks. True statement. Uncle Reggie. What's going on, Uncle Reggie? This move, in my opinion, puts us in the Eastern Conference Finals, at least when fully healthy. All hail Leon. I, I again, I'll, I'll go a step further. I, I don't even think that's the ceiling. Again, would ball, if, if we get there and it's a massive if and if we're healthy, which is in, in and of itself a big if. Would Boston be favored? Sure, they'd be favored, as they should be. They're in a really 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 well built team they're not a perfect team and they are not and they also i think just as importantly you know everybody has tatum maybe differently in their rankings of the top players in the league i don't view tatum as like oh they have that guy well we don't ultimately stand a chance i i don't view it that way i'd agree also just real quick shams tweeting how Phoenix now has two roster spots open to pursue additions on the buyout market. Mm-hmm. I feel like that could be a Lowry destination. That's certainly possible. They don't have a, a lead ball handler that, you know, could they wanted TJ McConnell way back when got rid of Cameron Payne. They could be a team, but uh, yeah, it just to go back to uncle Reggie's comment. Uh, I think at least is pretty lofty. I'm mm-hmm. much more comfortable with saying the second round, oh, but so I feel very good about this team's chances when they're healthy. It's a great time to be a Knicks fan. Now who's climbing back in the window? Thanks, Uncle Hang Reggie. On. Hang Appreciate on. it. I <laughs> relax. That very clear distinction between the two of us. Mark R. What's going on, Mark? I haven't caught the reasoning. Uh, can they bring over Rokas Yakovitis? Again, I'm punting this one to Jeremy. Is it worth it? Is it possible? Thanks. Thanks again for the love yesterday. Um is it worth it? Let me work it. So if the Knicks were to get Rokas Yakubaitis, there would be two options. Number one is signing him to a minimum contract. It's a two-year deal. With the first two years this year. Or number two, using the biannual exception, uh, which also would be a two-year deal, and this would be the first year. It doesn't make sense to bring him over this year. The thing that makes the most sense is this summer when the rookie exception comes into play. It's where you can sign a second-round pick to a very cheap team-friendly deal. I believe that would be a team option on the fourth year, which means that Rokas three years after that would likely be hitting restricted free agency. So if there's a time for the Knicks to get Rokas in the building, it is not now. It's in July. Yeah, uh, it's if anything. Um, So we'll see. Jason, what's going on, Jason? The Knicks now have real size around Jalen Brunson. Crazy. I love the size part of this. And like, you know, Benji just sent out a tweet, which I totally respect because he knows God knows a lot more about basketball than I do, um, where he said at full health, I'm concerned with the collective decline in speed, athleticism, burst and the increase in age. I get all that. I, I, 
I like the increase in size. I like the increase in size. And again, you're you. This is this is this was never supposed to be the year, and this is not any kind of finality in terms of what this roster is going to look like moving forward. So, yeah, I would agree. Kevin with another one. Stunning news: the prophet got it wrong. Shock. I don't. I mean, <laughs> what did I don't even know what he said. I, I can't say I paid attention to anything he's been tweeting the last few days. Do you know? I do. I'm just gonna say no comment. And sure. Thank you, okay. Kevin. Uh, Bobby Lynch, my concern is this the move you make for your final young player asset for a team continuously holding off for that star? It just puzzles me still. Grimes was not that level of asset. The notion that Grimes is going to be the difference in any meaningful hashtag meaningful trade this summer. That's going to be like the like if there's a star available and the Knicks want that star. I. I. I can't imagine a world where the difference between them getting that star and not getting that star with all that goes into star movement in the modern league. I do not think Quentin Grimes is going to be the difference. I just don't No. Would I have preferred if Grimes had not been dealt now, but instead this summer. Yeah. Cause I think that that would have, at least from a salary perspective, helped bridge the gap. You don't really need that because you can also use deuce to do that. So and I know that fans might be thinking, well, they just moved Grimes. Why are you talking about moving Deuce? But it's it's a realistic possibility, of course. And it's one we have to consider. So, yeah, Grimes wasn't going to make or break a trade in terms of value. He would have made or bra- or broken a trade in terms of um, salary. But you, there are other ways to replace him. You, you know what's better than sending another team a good, solid, like rotation pl- level player, young asset? sending them picks so they could tr- select the, their own guy that they've scouted and drafted or, and, and like done their homework on and they want their building and the whole thing. Uh, and they're going to be able to do that. So, yeah. Thanks, Bobby. Busy. What's going on, busy getting bogey is truly seeing how life will be like without Julius. I can't wait till what this looks like. Hurry back. OG. B- busy throwing some shade there. The funniest like part would be if Randall came back before OG in just like, like that would be, that would be the worst possible. thing that busy would encounter in this case. Yeah. Um, thanks busy. Appreciate you, man. Uh, busy with another one who starts at the four to a healthy uh, Boyan or precious. I think we, we talked about that Boyan. Um, so until we're health, I mean, I, I really, I mean, it's it's so weird to talk about this because we could just we could literally just be talking about three games, you know, because they're not going to be here tonight. So we could this could be a conversation about three games, but yeah, Boyan at the four, Hart at the three, Hartenstein, and then Divincenzo and Brunson. That's a that's a fun little that's a fun little lineup. This should also lineup. give Hartenstein some time to breathe, and this gets us back to what's most ideal, which is four out of fantastic shooters and then a fifth play. Well, you know, I mean, for the most part, obviously Randall and Hart have their drawbacks when healthy, but like you can craft a lineup of four shooters for the most part and a very solid rim protector or a non spacing five that can just focus on collecting offensive rebounds. And then you kick it out to other players who are open on the wing and try for more threes that way. I haven't even begun to think about the answer to the, my own question that I'm about to ask. But I think the more interesting question is when one of Julius or OG comes back, who becomes the starting three? And does the answer change depending on if it's Julius who comes back first or OG who comes back first? And maybe there's an obvious answer to that question that I'm just not thinking of. But to me, that is an interesting question. My guess, if OG comes back first, is Bogdanovich sticks it at the four. And if Randall comes back first, that they might go towards having Hart instead. Just my guess. I see what I, I so the the OG coming back first and then putting Bogey at the four. That makes a lot of sense to me. I the Randall one is interesting. Well, it's just 
do you trust Bogdanovich to see time at the three because you want to space the floor, but now what are you yeah. losing on defense? Because now outside of Hartenstein, your best defender is DiVincenzo who goes back to the point of attack where it yeah. wasn't his best thing. He was more you're right. a helper off ball. Yeah. I just, the way you're that right. Tibbs trusts Hart, I think that that's where it'll go. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It, that's it, it, well, we'll see. Because, be, no, because ran, uh, because Brunson, Brunson, DiVincenzo, Randall, and anyone other than Hart, that's not that's not enough defense on the floor. That's and that's the end of that conversation. <clears throat> Positionally um, as well, the majority of uh, Bogdanovich's time for the last few years has been spent at the four, but the Pistons have also been weird because of how they've used their bigs. So with more spacing and a more cohesive lineup, I think we'll we'll see more. Yeah. Um, um good. Good thought from you to answer to answer my question. Samuel Bart, what's going on, Samuel? When do you think we see next see OG play? The smoke from the Benji tweet, the injury designation, etc. doesn't seem great. I, for me, I, I mean, we're, I don't think there's any chance. I the, shouldn't say any chance. Real quick, but, Bagley. The, bag, the Bagley tweet. Ben, oh, Benji, yeah. I read it. Tweet, I read it. Just back. important the clarification. Bagley, that's all. Bagley tweet. I am fairly certain I heard Ian Bagley report after the last game that they are essentially not, they're going to give OG until the break. Those are the words that I heard. Um, go back and listen. It was, he was, report, he was reporting live at the garden with uh, his, his colleague from SNY. And it, go back and listen for yourselves. That's how I heard it. So I don't think we're seeing OG until after the break. If he was out the first game after the break, I would be, I'd be very like my concern level right now is like, I think a two out of five it would rise to like a, a four or a 4.5 out of five for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he has almost a month off, that would be right. I think that's about how much time. I mean, he's been. missed how many he's was he missed two weeks now. Yeah. I believe so, so yeah, it'll be, it would be, yeah. So it would be a month that, yeah, which is, that's, that's a lot. That's the a last lot. game that he played was, uh, it was a little less than two weeks. Well, actually it was around there. January 27th was the last game he played. So by the time the first game of the break, it would be almost four weeks. Um, Jake Fisher. I've heard several more options for the Bucks' ongoing search for perimeter defense this afternoon. Two more under Milwaukee's consideration per league sources: Chris Dunn and Najee Marshall. Uh, what a what a shocker it is that when you have no assets to trade, it becomes tough to fortify your weaknesses. Yeah, <clears throat> I like Najee, Najee Marshall for whatever it's worth, but I don't see why the Pelicans give him up because he's cheap and yeah. they need depth at the four. So. I We'll see. I don't know that the Pelicans know exactly what they're doing. Um, so that could be an issue. Sam Garcia, when everyone with everyone healthy, what's the playoff rotation? Yeah, I think we said this at the top. I think it. I think you're here. Let's go with this. I think the starting lineup stays the same, and I think your your backup, you know, and then you're going to play a traditional five off the bench, um, and then it's going to be two of three. I think. Let me rephrase that. No, it, it's it's Burks, Bogey, and Hart. But I think it's an interesting conversation as to which of those three might get the might sit on the bench in the second half of a really close game. And does it change depending on the matchup? Um, so, yeah, probably does. If I had to guess that Tibbs is going to play Josh Hart as much as he can, because he just feels like, look, I trust his abilities on defense and to maybe hit a shot compared to. I say Bogdanovich's ability is on offense and maybe defend a player. That's I've, just that's just my guess. The I've, rebounding, the size I've, is with Bogdanovich, of course, but I just there, there's some it's gonna be the starting five when healthy, plus a center, plus Hart, some of Burks, and of course some of Bogdanovich. But it also depends like to your point of the matchups. Yeah. The Knicks draw the Cavs, like they're probably gonna want to be a larger team, but yeah. how did they beat the Cavs last year? with brute force yeah, uh, is Bogdanovich going to be that type of player? Is there going to be a lot yeah, of time fair. that's there? Do you fair. have more size with Alec Burks than you would have with Deuce McBride? So yeah. I mean, as you said, it's matchup dependent. As usual, you're right. Josh Hart's playing minutes. That's probably a ridiculous statement to, to say that he's not. I just think that's, that's what tips trust the most and it might be to his detriment. And yet Hart had, I mean, that shot in game one was still one of the better moments of the last 25 years. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. Uh, Uncle Reggie, Philly, signs Buddy Healed, Leon Rose, hold my beer. Uh, yes, the Philly traded for Buddy Healed. We haven't talked about that. Um, 
I, uh, who had the tweet again? Apologies again to whoever had this. This is not my original thought, but good luck um, trusting uh, Buddy Heald and Tyrese Maxey on the court together in a in a playoff game uh, defensively. That's that's tough. Now, offensively, Buddy Heald does. But does Buddy Heald make you a lot better? Yeah, but it, it, there's a trade off there. A very serious trade off. This move screams to me half measure. It's Daryl yeah. Morey saying, hey, look, Joel, we're a better team this year, but also we're not dipping into our cap space next year to create an opportunity for you. But also there aren't a lot of avenues for us to get you the right talent that needs to fit around you. So I get why Philly did this. I think it was a fine move. It doesn't change much, in my opinion, both short term or long term. Um, by the way, you is going back to Brooklyn. Oh, man. Poor Yuta. <laughs> He was in a good space. I mean, not from a playing perspective, but they were no, winning. He was not playing not, not playing any any minutes. Forget about meaningful minutes. Jonathan uh, Francois, Grimes was untouchable in the Mitchell trade, but not here. Any regrets on not pulling the trigger trigger for Mitchell? So we've uh, this has become like a joke, it, the untouchable part of it. I, do I need to go on a – I don't want to go on a rant about this. It was never – like it wasn't that they refused to give up Quentin Grimes, and that's why the Mitchell deal – like didn't get done in the sense that like if you don't give up this player there is no deal it was more you need to get to this level grimes was one of several avenues that would have gotten to them to this level they didn't want to give up grimes and they more importantly weren't willing to give up a certain modicum of future draft equity um and the pat bev to the bucks uh i don't know who reported this um anyway per pat bev but pat beverly reported it that he's going to the bucks he's getting traded to the bucks good good job by uh, by pat beverly reporting his own trade um so like yes they valued grimes very highly in the mitchell deal but to, to characterize it as like he was the untouchable and thus the deal didn't get done i I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with that characterization you could you could say yeah it's semantics that's fine um for me do i have regrets no uh, because I love where this team is at. And I guess what? If they want to go get Donovan Mitchell, I have a funny feeling they're still going to be able to do that. Yeah, I don't have regrets. I also kind of look at it. It's like, well, if you have Donovan Mitchell next to Jalen Brunson, that's it's very small backcourt. Both are very good with the ball in their hands. I'm sure they could find a way to make it work. Don't get me wrong. But I, like the untouchable thing was really about not wanting to do the Knicks it was not the Knicks wanting to trade RJ and Quentin Grimes. They felt that that was too rich of a package. And we can look at that and say like, well, obviously the talent Donovan Mitchell and, and this, and like, that's not quite the point. It, it was also the picks attached. It was steppy and it was how it hamstrings you. It was how did you make it work with all these players? So I'm very much at peace with it. Certainly depends on what the Knicks do this summer and moving forward, but um, it'll be fun to hopefully play Cleveland in the playoffs again. Yeah. If, if it comes to that, Kalmalot? Kalmalot? Kalmalot. Uh, how do we resign free agents while staying under the tax? Jeremy? Uh, I guess I, I feel like I'm trying to fully evaluate. Well, the free agent perspective would just be like, hey, minimum contracts this year. That'll help yeah. you stay under the tax if you're the Knicks. The tax goes away. I mean, like there's the tax will come back most likely next year, but the Knicks don't have cap space. So will they use an exception? My guess is still no. I think they're going to go the Burks route of using his bird rights to keep him for a number that works for all parties. Other than that, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, it's... Are, they're can fine. I ask something? Of course. The, I don't think the Knicks are going to care about going into the tax next year. Next year, no. This year, yeah. yes. Yeah, right. so... But, again, but they, so, won't, uh, they won't easily... It's, it's not about the tax at that point. It's like, okay, you sign a player and you're in the tax. That's fine. But signing that player, did they hard cap you? If they did, was getting and the star impacting you that way? That's the only reason you would not want to use your exception. Which goes That's back why I was to what we confused with how to evaluate the question. Yeah, which which goes back to what we said before, which is that another nice tangential benefit of this trade is they are not leaving themselves in a position where they have to use any exception to complete their team this summer. They have they are deep as all hell we haven't even mentioned the precious contract situation like i know precious is kind of in limbo now but like this is another player they have his restricted free agent rights 
Um, so like they, their ability to make sure that they are going into next year again without using an exception, which would hard cap them and still have a very, very, very good and very, very deep roster. Um, they've set themselves up perfectly. So I think that's a that's a great thing. Alex, do you think we now make a hard push on the buyout market towards Lowry? We talked about this. It's, it's I'm not sure what the playing time is. The money might be an issue. Uh, so, no. Uh, d- love Deuce, but traditional backup point guard who could soak up minutes is the biggest need. I They needed ways to put pressure on the defense and, and get the ball rolling downhill with Brunson off the court. They did that today, regardless of whether they acquired a traditional backup point guard or not. Like, I, again, I know nobody wants to hear it. Alec Burks helps you in that respect. Um, it's about creation and shooting. Can you put those two things on the floor at the same time? They now can do that a lot easier than they could yesterday. I think what's tripping people up as well is you've got one through five, and it's like, well, what's a backup one? What's a backup four? Like, I wouldn't silo it to that specific, uh, position, position specifically. It's more like you've got guards and wings, forwards, bigs, however you want to like, go about it. Just having some sort of coverage is important. Uh, Thank you, Alex. Dom Cappuccini, what's going on, Dom? Uh, I'll miss Q for sure. I'm a big believer when it comes down to prioritizing firsts. They made the right but tough move. Kudos to New York for not caving into Toronto's demands. The trade will be more. This trade will be more impactful. I wonder what Toronto at the end of the day uh, demanded for Brown. And I... Again, I kind of I'll ask a version of a question I asked the other night. If the Knicks had their druthers, like, and the and both prices were amenable, like, would they rather have had uh, Brown? But you can't even say would they rather have had Brown than Bogey because uh, that. I mean, I'm sh- maybe there was a world where you could have made it work financially. I, it would have been a lot more complicated. The, the the easiest way to get Burks was to also have Bogdanovich be a part of the deal. Otherwise, completing that trade was going to be extraordinarily difficult. Unless you wanted to use the Fournier contract on Burks, which then you're shot to shit because you, then you don't get Brown. So anyway, you look at it. This was the this was the, the way to do it. Yeah, and it's it's just simple math of working backwards. If you think that the Knicks are not going to go into the tax, it's what can and can't they do that works financially, but also what works on the court. And um, I don't know. I mean, like it's I, I agree. I think it's good that the Knicks did not give up a first round pick to get the talent that they needed. They added the spacing that they wanted. I'm curious what other move the Knicks would have made if they had Brown, uh, if they like what four they would have gone after. Would it have been a Kelly Olenek, but he doesn't play the five. Like I just not entirely sure, but we don't really need to know at this point because they went in a good direction. Agreed. No, that's are waving Harry Giles. That's a shame. Mm-hmm. Uh <clears throat> Dom with another one. Stay tuned for the next move coming uh, to a draft day near you. Let's go Knicks. What a time to be a freaking fan. This front office is the best. I love the level of competence. I love I just I, competence and I love the level of confidence um, that the front office uh, gives me. I would agree. Reverend John Ortiz. What's going on, Reverend? Love the trade. Love you guys. Keep up the great work. Well, that's extremely that's kind. Too. Thank you. Um, by the way, Jake Fisher reports Sixers are still in conversations with the Bulls on Andre Drummond. Bulls remain actively engaged elsewhere, being told Philadelphia is not pursuing DeMar DeRozan. It's going to be hysterical that the Bulls are going to hang on to DeRozan um, and be again, yet again between um, a rock and a hard place uh, this summer. What do you think? Jer- uh, yeah, sorry. Um, no, it's, it, it, I agree. And also, again, the Sixers not pursuing DeRozan. I'm not saying they need him. I understand where his age is at, but like on the surface, you're talking about you could get talent that helps you and that could conceivably help you this summer. If you really wanted to do it, they're not that interested. At least it certainly doesn't seem it's just if you if you're if you're not appreciative to be a Nick fan, if you're not like Dom and appreciating the world we live in right now, go look in and go look at some of these other teams situations. Um, Thank you again, Dom. And Dom, one more. The flirtation with finishing top five in offense and defense starts today. Do you guys agree? I think top five defense probably becomes tougher. Top five offense, I think, goes more on the table. That's wrong. So for context, the Knicks are uh, seventh in offense and Sixth in defense, right? Uh, seventh in defense, according oh, to the Okay. So 
Yeah, if there was a trade off, I think the offense wins out and the defense suffers a bit. But it all depends on the health of OG and Anobi. I think other than Bo- other than Boston, I and maybe LA, they're the Clippers. To be clear, I don't know that any other team, when fully healthy, again, there's that term again, will have as good a as good a balance in terms of offense and defense. Now. What wins in the playoffs? You got to be elite at something, and lately it's been you got to be elite at offense. Um, I think still that's going to remain the toughest box because that gets back to what Jeremy was talking about earlier, which is like you don't have that other other superstar because we already got one. I still trust Denver, especially. I mean, their offense well, that's, is great. Their defense yeah. is like that's the other team where you know their defense is good it. enough. We know their defense is good enough. Right? Yeah, but we also. Yeah. Uh, saw the Knicks absolutely mollywop them. So, <laughs> mollywop. Heard about that before. Is that Andrew? Did I just make that word up. Wa- I don't know. It's great though. I that was a word. It's a fantastic. It's awesome. Andrew P. DiVincenzo and Deuce equals so long. Grimes. The hell's. Oh, who the hell's playing tonight? We. I don't know. I don't know. I can't wait till we get Brunson news. I have a funny feeling Brunson's gonna play. Yeah, I think so too. Be very fun. I, I, we'll see. Russ Guberman, what's going on, Russ? I knew Grimes' era was over. It's hard to demote a guy in any workplace and then keep him long term. Was pushing hard for um, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Got the big bro instead. Yeah, I mean they're not actually related, but uh, <laughs> the Atlanta version uh, of oh, wow. Oh my goodness! <laughs> the Pistons are releasing Killian Hayes. That's well. How not to, I mean, again, not that Killian Hayes is like anything great, but you've been starting this guy for most of the year. A lot Over of the Jaden Ivey. <laughs> yeah. Like there, there were DNP coach decisions from this because Killian Hayes was playing ahead of him. And it's it, like, I'm I, for the Pistons sake, I'm glad that they're not trying to double down and keep him, but. Yeah it, just, I, yeah, it just shows how they wasted the seventh overall pick. And we're we as Knicks fans are accustomed to that. We've seen plenty of of poor lottery picks just or just poor picks come and go. But that's, that's anyway. just brutal. Andrew, what's uh, up? Buyout guy for the Knicks? I, I'm just are asking they tanking? I, I'm asking they you I, I don't think I don't think he's the 12th man. Okay. I, I well, I, that, that's generous for him to be the 12th man. I just he apparently is, have not watched the Pistons, which admittedly is a good life decision. But like, I well, like, I didn't realize he was that bad. Hayes, no, Hayes has done some good stuff this year. There's a reason why. I mean, Monty Williams does still know what he's doing to some extent. Like he wanted to play Killian Hayes because Killian Hayes does some nice things. Um, Played him over it's just, Ivy consistently. I no, I but that's the funny. That's why it's funny. It's not the the funny part is not in a vacuum. The Knicks there or the Pistons are waving Killian Hayes. It's just the. The the just it, it it speaks again to the complete and total lack of direction that that organization has seemingly had since I mean for a while. Real quick as well, uh, Chris Haynes just tweeted <laughs> that the probable path for Los Angeles Lakers is standing pat at trade deadline, with potential to acquire another star player in the offseason when armed with three first round picks. The funniest thing to me is this idea that we're going to now go into the offseason. And Lakers fans are going to be trying to convince so many of us that, well, actually, their picks are far more important than what the Knicks have and that the Knicks can't offer what the Lakers have because of Laker pedigree. Don't really know. But that's a bold move by the Lakers to essentially punt on this year. I'm curious if they're going to try to save money because if they if they want to duck the tax, because they're not going to get better, they might as well save money. Either way, not a great look if you're – LeBron and you're about to turn 40 years old. I, didn't they call LeBron's bluff? Isn't that what this is? Sure That's looks exactly like it. This is, this is like, yeah. look, you don't run this team. We do. And in return, LeBron could walk for nothing or opt in and then get Delta Oklahoma City. And and it wouldn't cost her. Like there, it's yeesh. Okay. And don't forget How the, not to build a team. Don't forget the Pelicans can have they're for the Lakers first rounder either this year or next year. And they don't have to decide until after the lottery. So if the, if, if LeBron is like, fuck this, fuck all y'all, 
I'm going to pack it up the rest of the season. I don't think he'll do that. But if he ever were to, boy, would that be funny if the Lakers were sweating out lottery night. Anyway. My the, the best scenario is that the Pelicans say, you know what, L.A., keep your pick. That's fine. And then the Lakers do everything in their power to draft Bronny, but another team gets him. Or Bronny's available and they don't draft him. They don't draft him. No, so there, there's, that, it's set yeah. up for a, a lot of Chaos. fun possibilities with the Lakers, which, like, yeah, they won a championship, and, yeah, they have two of the most talented players in the league. But it's just, it, again, kind of speaks to, this has been an incredibly poorly run organization for quite some time now. And the fact that they are in Los Angeles has saved them. And the fact that they got extraordinarily lucky, extraordinarily lucky several years in a row with the lottery, with the whole pick protection thing that they kept keeping the pick and keeping the pick and keeping the pick. They've been very poorly run. Uh, okay. Uh, continuing along. Uh, down with another one. Top five and three point efficiency. Here we come. LOL. Pardon my excitement, please. You could be. Ex- I'm excited, man. I'm totally excited, and I again, I love, I love the fact that they they're they're a really good offensive team. They were already, but now they're. I think they're even better. <clears throat> um, Ja, uh, people happy we didn't give up firsts. Confuse me. I don't. I have no idea what to make of this comment. I, I mean. The Knicks got good talent and they didn't give up first round picks. I guess the, the question, Jaw, is like if you're not as happy with the return, then like the fact the Knicks didn't give up first round picks should be a good sign. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm I think gonna... he 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 wants to give up first instead of Grimes, which um would have really I again I would have I would have looked at that and been like, huh, is Quentin Grimes playing now here with Burks and well, I, I, that would have gone over great, by the way. You don't trade Grimes, and then he's out of the rotation after this trade, and instead you traded away a first or first. So that would, that I'm sure that would have been awesome. M. Torts, according to Tommy Beer, Bogey is number one in the NBA in points per touch. Wow, I mean he's incredibly efficient. Like yeah. the dude, I'll go. Look. I was looking up Burke's uh, efficiency before. He's been seventy um, fifth uh, and seventy third percentile efficiency the last two years. I'll, I'll go get Bogey while we get the next comment up there. Um, Hushu, uh, OG's injury, how worrisome is it long term? I think we talked about this already. Um, let's see if let's hope he plays right after the all star break. Agreed. L Coriano 11, when fully healthy, the best bench in the league. This is a good question. It's a tough question to answer because. In the playoffs, which is really what we care about, right? We, it's never, you're never playing all bench guys. And most of the time, you're keeping two, if not three starters on the floor. So it's a bit, a little bit of like, um, the, the premise is, is a little faulty. But just at face value, I, I think so. Unless I'm, I'll, I'll do a quick look at teams. I think so. I would imagine it's among the best. Yeah, I can't. I can't quite think of. I mean, Cleveland's a deeper team. Cleveland's so very deep. They work. Other than that, there. Yeah, there are not a lot of options. I think Houston has some good talent. I wouldn't necessarily put their. I wouldn't put their bench ahead of the Knicks. The Clippers probably. Russ has been very good for them in the role that he's been playing. Uh, yeah, but the Knicks are at minimum top five. I'm looking at it, like OKC okay, is... and maybe even top one. OKC okay, is a dynamite bench. Um, yeah, I think, and and uh, New Orleans is also pretty deep. But I I th- I think I would take our bench over any bench in the league for sure. Um, <clears throat> thanks, El Coriano, Oakster. Thank you for the contribution. Um, Nick fan patrol. I just want to see the Jeremy dance. Do we have permission from Jeremy to see the Jeremy dance? By all means. You want to retire it? <laughs> there it is. That's it. There it is. I mean, there it was. There you go. Um, I I'm comfortable retiring it whenever you are. I'm also comfortable letting it continue to live on, uh, forever and ever. Your call. I never uh, thought, Z- by the way, that I would dance for money. That's pretty sweet. Thank you, Knicks Man Patrol. That's uh, that's like 
a dream come true. It's the closest thing I'll get to stripping. I heard, I heard they're casting for uh, Magic Mike 4. Uh, Nick Fan oh, yeah. Patrol. Oh, wait. Or Zeke Smith. What is the Mavs front office doing? Countdown for Luka to the Knicks in two years. Ha, ha, ha. Um, look, I find... I think there's there's a lot of interesting teams to watch. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, interesting teams to watch in the playoffs. I might put the Mavs number one with a bullet because, again, in doing what they did uh, at this deadline, they've really just taken out any possibility of, of being able to make any other big move. So if things go belly up in the playoffs this year, like – Luke is looking around. It's like, okay, this is it. This is the team. This is the team that we, we have. Uh, he has two years left on his contract before he can exercise a player option. I yeah. still would gather it's Philly. That's like my number one team to watch in all of this. But the Mavs are probably a, a not super distant second. The fact that they got a first round pick back this year, I think is important. They just have to do something with it. I, I like uh, lively they did a very nice job with that selection but there aren't a ton of options for how they can elevate this team moving forward it's also possible that they try to make a larger move and use josh green's salary next year and use this pick as sweetener or replacement or whatever but yeah it's it, it, it's fascinating how they're going about this they yep. still have not replaced jalen brunson i know they've kyrie irving i get that but i it's not even a, a, a this season. It's certainly not a question of who's the better player. I I know who I'd rather have. Uh, thanks, Zeke. G two. I actually want to use our. It's you always happens once a live stream. Somebody reads my mind of what I'm thinking. I actually want to use our two 2024 picks to draft. I was I was just gonna say, you know how exciting it's gonna be to go into draft night with the with the possible like probability that we're gonna get another young player or two on this team. And I'm I'll I'll just add to that like. If they come out of this draft without any young players, I would almost certainly think that that means that they will have swung a star trade on draft night. A hundred percent. Especially when you consider if Rokas does come over, that's a roster spot. He's going to want to be in the rotation as well. And I imagine there would be a role for him. Let's say like four of the guys in the starting five are probably around the same and maybe one or two of the backcourt players get trade. Like the way that I see this going is that the Knicks use one, but not two first round picks. And I don't even know. I can't even say that they're going to use one uh, because I just, I don't know, but I, I would hope that they do because it'd be good to have some sort of continuous soup, but it all depends on aprons and taxes and everything. But to your point, John, yeah, if they, like, if you're a Knicks fan, you almost hope that they don't have, multiple first round picks because it means that they yeah. did something seismic. Yep. That's fair. Um, Oscar Luang, do you see the Knicks making two picks on draft night? I, Jeremy just answered that question. I don't disagree with him. I just jumped ahead because I knew that oh, okay. this, there's another question referring to this. So thank you, Oscar, for the Thank you, Oscar. Appreciate you. Dom with another one. I really fucking love this team and Leon Rose with some heart emojis. I, I love it too. It's 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 such a... It's such a flip the script over the last five years. Um, almost to the day. Uh, again, from the KP trade, which again, I'm, we're not going to sit here and talk about the Porzingis trade, but like that was a, it was a, mo it was not a, it's not a banner moment for the franchise. I think any way you consider it, that was not a banner moment for the franchise. No. Memphis is also acquiring Yuta instead of going to Brooklyn. Oh, uh, that's too, I, too bad. I'm sure the all I'm sure the net fan would have loved to see you to back. Um Memphis is a fun city. I like Memphis. Uh, I don't think I've time. I don't think I've been to Memphis. I, I would like to go. Uh Dan Hidalgo, if one hundred percent healthy, do the Knicks still make this trade? Uh it was a, a question we talked about at the top of the show. I think it's uh, I would have wanted them to. I'll say that. I would have wanted them to. I I can't answer the. I'd be guessing. I, I might. I don't even know if I have a gut feeling. Do you have a gut feeling on whether they would have made it if they were full healthy? I think they still would have done it. They just probably would have been like maybe there would have been more attention focused towards the the Burks play, like the player that would have been instead of Burks as opposed to at the four because they would have trusted Randall's health a little bit more. Mm. The 
the fascinating thing to me is it feels like you can look at how the Knicks have evaluated players at the four. And now more often than not, they've actually chosen players who are not similar to Randall's skill set. And what I mean by that is like they clearly prioritize shooting at the four. If you look at what Obi's doing in Indiana, he he's shooting very well. I'm sure that's something that they envisioned in an off ball role. We know how good of an off ball player Bogdanovich is. I don't, I'm not saying like, Oh, next are going to turn around and do something with Randall, but down the line, if you're talking about, Hey, how do the Knicks make a perfect team that meets their needs? It's probably finding someone who shoots more like Bogdanovich uh, off the catch and defends and, more like, and him. right. <laughs> well, but even still like it's, it's, Randall is fitting here and fitting well here, but may not be the optimal fit when this team reaches its apex. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to. No, wanna I mean, do... I just mean that in terms of no, hey, Bogdanovich coming here is in, in another interesting example of what they look for in I, fours. And I, I'm, I'm forward. so on the same page with you. I just don't want to go down that road. Agreed. Today is not the day to do it. He's but, not, yeah. he's not getting traded anytime soon, so it should be fine. Yeah, that goes, yeah, that goes without saying. Uh, Russ with another one. By the way, Boyan is a former. Donovan teammate, yes, and those guys had uh, some success together. Um, I, I, I think they liked playing with each other. Um, it's interesting. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe they'll be traded for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Elias uh, Awike. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Glad the trade got done. My head was spinning for rumors. Uh, I feel like this goes back to Fred's point of finding a good option, not a perfect option. Age is the negative they ended up settling for um yeah but it, but again if you're going to get older at least make sure you got older and better from a basketball standpoint in basically every way and make sure as you got older it did not compromise your long-term uh goals which i think you, you know you, you surrounded the increase in age with almost on almost universal positives thanks elias Travis, what's going on, Travis? Thank you so much for the very generous contribution. Just showing some love. Let's freaking go Knicks, and let's freaking go KFS. Thank you, Travis. Great. Thank you so much, Travis. I really appreciate that. Appreciate every. I my understanding is that there's a lot of people still watching. So thank you, everybody who came and joined us today. Um, been really cool. It's been a fun one. This has been good. Over fourteen hundred still watching live, oh. and we're two hours and twenty three minutes. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Armand Burdenajaj, Burdenot, Burdenajaj. I'll get that right one day. Increase in size brings more. <laughs> Read it in full. Increase in size brings more creation juice. I've heard that's how it works. Andrew, I'd say I did a pretty good job of keeping it together when John kept talking about increase in size. Would you agree with that? Yes, I. Yeah. I, I so was, much so that. I, that, that he didn't even acknowledge that I I, I didn't even laughing. think I didn't know I didn't there it just was right the beauty there. of my role is I was behind the scenes laughing my ass off so it was good yes this is a good question Armand and as as Jody Foster on True Detective would say ask the question and this is what you did you asked the question <laughs> oh man that's great Anthony Strato what random letter is Clyde gonna add to Bogey's name. I I'm looking forward to how he pronounces his last name because I've heard it before and it's it's good. And also Alec Burks because he, he gets that, you know, he he's creative with that one too occasionally. Over under 0 0.5 times that Clyde says Bogdan instead of Boyan. Oh, that's that's an easy over, right? You think so? I I guess I I suppose he could. It's probably too low. Should we say, all right, you know, you want to do it on the season? You want to say. Uh, oh, you're talking about just the first game? I was saying more of the first game, but if we want to. Talk oh, about yeah, sure. Season. No, over, I think over. Right. Oh, I think over under 0.5 is the right line. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go over still. I'll, I'll um, go over. I barely won. Uncle Reggie, when did the Mavs hire Isaiah Thomas as GM? I mean, look, I, I there I, I, I get it. They have Luka Doncic. They're trying to win with Luka Doncic. And they are making the best moves available to them. I 
I, 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 I'm very precise with my verbiage there. They were making the best moves available to them in an attempt to win around Luka Doncic. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know how, how successful they're going to be. I would agree. We'll see. Lee Horowitz, what's going on, Lee? How you doing, man? Uh, thank you for the generous contribution. Living in San Francisco Bay Area, I usually listen to your pods the morning after. Uh, I lis- listened to un what is that? Undressed? Sure. Undressed? The KFS team is amazing. Just want to say thanks. Let's go, Knicks. Um, thank you for listening and following and all of the things. We appreciate the support any way we could get it. Um, it's fun to be able to get on here and do this. Because it's a lot better than just talking to ourselves. Uh, D. Flesh. Hit the damn music. Knicks are scary and title contenders. Yes, I said it. Nothing wrong with saying that. Frank Sound. Still want Joel Joel Ambulance at this point. Man. What say you, Jeremy? I mean, look, I'm just going to make the point. When healthy, he was the MVP candidate for us to the MVP. Yeah, period. No for candidate. To... When like, healthy, he was the MVP. I fully see the health issue for us to kind of turn our noses at that type of player, especially when the center that the Knicks have has missed significant time two of the last three years and three of the last four years. Um, always, as always, it depends on the price. But there's, I can't sit here and be like, I'm out 100. percent It's I'm intrigued. Let's explore it. I can't by any means say no. Uh, it, Joel Embiid's jersey might as well be the denim jacket hanging in my closet. Because uh, I ain't never going to quit that idea. Uh, Joel's really, really good when healthy. And I think perhaps more than any X's and O's, I think the thing with Joel and Nick Nurse, I don't, I don't think, did. I think you could look at it at his usage rate this year and say Nick Nurse maybe didn't do the best possible job. Not that it was up to Nick Nurse because Joel likes his numbers and he wants to win MVPs. So I'm not putting all the blame on Nurse or maybe any blame on Nurse. But like the whole thing with Joel is you got to get him to the finish line. And he's never gotten to the finish line in one piece or with enough energy to bring his team past the finish line. And it's, it is interesting to, to me to note that you want to talk about a team that we're... we're we're sitting here and talking about this team as potential Eastern Conference finalists today without Joel Embiid. You don't think Joel would like to come to a team, maybe just maybe, where he's like, holy shit. I like, obviously, I'm going to add a lot, but this team's already pretty good without me. Uh, I, I don't know, man. That's that might be tempting and it might pay. It might pay the sort of dividends that we've been waiting to be paid for Joel's entire career. And Last thing before we save this for the summer, how yes, many please. players do you think are on this Knicks roster that would be moved to get Joel Embiid? Uh, maybe, maybe two. I was going to say two, right? So, like, okay, we're talking mostly about draft equity, and I understand why that might make people queasy. But like, if if we're talking about this team as a contender, right, and you get someone like him in the door, and you don't give up a whole lot, maybe it's probably three players, maybe like. You're still in pretty good shape. You can still find ways to do it. And there's a reason why I maintain his value will be lower than like the boogeyman concern. Because oftentimes as Knicks fans, we either swing wildly optimistic or incredibly pessimistic. It wasn't very long ago when it was, oh my God, Julius Randle's going to opt into his player option and he's never going to leave this team. Um, or like Josh Hart's going to opt out and cost $20 million. Like whatever, like, there are moves that they make that can function and flow. And the nice thing of having one agency largely control this team is there's a lot of communication. So if things were able to fall into place, I don't think the Knicks are necessarily in a position where they could say, we're good. We're going to keep waiting. If a top five NBA player, top three over the last three seasons and top one this year were to say, um, you know, like we're to be available. I just, it's yep. difficult for me. Yep. Thanks Frank. By the way, we have clarification on that undressed line in the super chat oh. that you it, it's listened to hundreds. It's just a mistype. Mrs. Oh, listen to hundreds of our pods. That I apologize. He, you. No, you didn't read anything wrong. He had a typo. So thank you to I 
forget Lee Horowitz Lee. Lee. Um, for, for that clarification. And by the way, you asked this earlier when you were crawling back inside the window. The last time the East had uh, f- five 50 win teams, I have had some time and I've been researching. I found the answer. Do you want to guess when it was? Um. I don't because I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> it's a very popular year in NBA history. In fact, during the pandemic, they made a documentary about it. What, uh, well, obviously, you just gave it away. I, my gut, my inclination was to say before 2000. I wouldn't have guessed 97, 98, but 97, 97 98, 98 wow. is the year. The five teams that won 50 games. Well, do you want to do you remember that, John? Um, I'll, I'll try to do. We could do back and forth. I'll go first. Uh, Indiana. Indiana is one. They won 58 games. Jeremy. Bulls. I was going to say the easy ones are Chicago Bulls. They were the mm. one team, one seed, won 62 games. Uh, oh, this is going to be, this is a bad look. Uh, are the next one of the teams. That's the uh, year Ewing hurt his arm, hurt his hand. I'm trying to remember what seed they were because they made it they the second the, round that year. Right, but they were the seven seed. That's the Larry Johnson grabs, uh, fights Car- uh, Alonzo Mourning in game four. You just, you just gave me an answer. It's the Heat. Heat. The Miami Heat, I mean. That was an obvious one too, I thought. But go I, ahead, Jeremy. My records, I don't, I don't stick with me. Go, Jeremy. Oh man, I, I don't know anything. Alive. <laughs> Hawks were they a fifty-win team? Fifty and thirty-two. Good job, Good job Jeremy. Go. There's one more. Great job by you. Uh, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark. The Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets. Five for Look five. Us. Look at us. What a day. Yeah. Yeah. The Knicks went 43 and 39. Um, as I mentioned, they in a game four win against the Miami Heat in the 2 7 in the final moment. Alonzo Mourning and uh, Larry Johnson got into a brouhaha. And Jeff I'll Van Gundy, like, like a man possessed, decided to grab the leg of Alonzo Mourning. Uh, Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson were suspended for game five in Miami, which helped the Knicks go to the second round and win game five in a best of five back then. The first round was best of five. Who was the six seed? The sixth seed was the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Sean Kemp Cleveland Cavaliers. That's a great call. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you for doing that. that of course. Good. <laughs> Red Cats, I'm tired and overwhelmed. Yeah, join the club, pal. I was about to say. <laughs> I was hoping to get a little writing Happy done to have before. You. I was hoping to get a little writing done before the putback and going to pick up my kids from school. That shit ain't happening. I I woke up this morning, did work for my day job, uh, and then thought, oh, I'll go get something to eat. And then the trade broke, and I still have not eaten. John, I think that I'm just going to tuck this day away for Yom Kippur and just be like, I did it. It's done. It's fine. It's, You're allowed to I do already, that? I already got my – no, of course not. I'm just – I'm. it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> You're not talking to the most devout among her, of, amongst yeah. us. Yeah, imagine me going to a rabbi, be like, "Rabbi, listen, I don't have to eat today because uh, I uh, did the trade deadline, and it's fine because you know you get it. You could you could talk to talk to God, right? That's how I'm sure that'll go. I, I am nothing if not a, a man who makes compromises with his Lord and Savior. John, uh, you are you are amazing that you were like, oh, you can do that. There's a loopholes in, in religion. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like a Maybe it's like a you. Why not? Maybe it's no, it's like I'm a player accruing. Game later. I'm accruing time is what I'm doing. Right? Rabbi, I have a rain check. All right. <laughs> exactly. I have it signed, notarized. It's swap rights. Come on. Yeah, swap rights are valuable. What That's if I thing. honor my own Sabbath? It's just like I didn't I didn't use technology on a Tuesday. Yeah. Bank them all in one week, get it over with. Exactly. Well, for the next yeah. seven weeks. Right. <laughs> They'd be a lot more religious if if there was a religion out there like this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Creating our own religion as we speak. Yes, the religion of Tom Thibodeau. Yeah. <laughs> Something tells me you're already a devout believer. Oh that. man. Yeah. I'm a minister. Ordained. Thanks, Fred. Good luck. <laughs> Six more, by the way. Great. Hey, Jessica, what's going on, Jess? How are you? I'll be making a multiple hour supercut with original copyright free music of the Jeremy Jig. Oh, You're welcome in advance. A big mazel tov to Leon. Amen to that. Love that. Jeremy Jig. All right. Let's do it. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. So do you prefer the Jeremy Jig or the Jeremy Jam? Because I know you watch Parks and Rec, too. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I feel like it's hard to discern. I, I think that jam has a better like there's just like a better tonality to jeremy jam Mm -hmm. but 
it's already been taken. So I don't know if that if that works exactly. Um, Counterpoint like yes. that that honors it even better because it it already has some notoriety to it, and then we make it our own. You know, respectfully to to Jessica, I think Jam's also a, like like the way you could say it, Jeremy Jam. It flows like the diction with with jig is a little bit harder because of the G at the end. So I think, I think Jeremy jam, it just, there's more of a flow. Mm -hmm. Don't I'm forget also mute John. Cause he's eating into the microphone. So as he now unmutes, I'm, I'm mute. <laughs> yeah, my DJ name, not... my DJ name was Johnny jams, Johnny jams. Yeah. All right. So many, jams. my DJ, my fake DJ name was always Jer Jer Binks, but I never actually pursued it professionally. Jer Jer Binks. Yeah, that was, that's what I had growing up. Which I like again, didn't DJ. It's still like if I were ever to be a DJ, like Jer Jer Binks. That's that's all it is. Jer Jer Binks. There you go. That's better than Johnny Jams. Uh thanks, Jessica. You're the best. Jessica with another one. So new. This team isn't out there just playing with their oh, schmeckles it's like so a new. bunch of nudniks. Unlike Robert Randolph, they aren't schmucks. We had Spilkies? He's doing the Close. Berman. Close. <laughs> he's leaning into the Zoom camera. Spilkies? <laughs> but he's in Leon, we trust. He's Stark. As <laughs> Oigatus? Jeremy, you want to try? <laughs> I was pretty close on a lot of these. I'm not fluent in Yiddish. I'm just going to be honest. Uh, I think it would be more Azoigatus. Or I'm I know I'm, I know that's a little off, but it's closer. And I think uh, the other one would have been Spilkis. Spilkis? Yeah, instead of uh, Spilkis or whatever it was that said. But I, John, I, that was a minefield, and you did a very good job. So kudos oy, to you, sir. Oy vey. <clears throat> Alex with another one. Do you think Jalen Brunson has shown enough to hold on to the starting point guard spot over Alec Burks? It's a close call. Uh, this really is the – I feel bad we're only getting to this now. It's the biggest question emerging from the trade. It's true. I mean, the Knicks got a starting point guard out of this trade for not even a first round pick. It's pretty impressive. Incredible work. Incredible work by Leon Rose. Yeah. And we'll have the best backup in the league in Jalen Brunson. So it's good. Funny. Come on, funny. Thank you. Thank you for the generous contribution, man. Say it. Um, I, I hate doing it because I don't do it as good. Do you want to do it? You, you got to do it. It's, it's, it's all you. Alec. Like the like like the like the Knicks PA announcer would do it. I didn't write the question. I thought he announced it like Alec Burks, like with a very poignant That's beat. Thought, yeah, but as opposed, but at Fuddy has the drawn out use. Um, anyway, and Boyan Peter Bogdanovich, I like that reference. Leon's uh, one sin is off the books. Sad to say, he had to push out a fellow Frenchman. The spies are hurt guys more time, and once healthy, our bench will cook. What a time to be alive. I remember. Hold I remember, on. Oh. Fuddy's saying that. Fuddy's saying it's a Seinfeld reference. Burks or Peter Bogdanovich is a Seinfeld reference. No, Burks. Uh, I'm trying to think about what. I'm trying to think about what Seinfeld reference it is. I'm also blanking. I'm, bl I'm blanking, too. That's to a bad fair, job by me. It, we're in hour three and our brains have turned to rot this week. So this, uh, <laughs> usually we'd, we'd have this done uh, down um, pat, but. Yeah, just regarding uh, Fournier, I remember when we did the did the free agency live stream and they signed him, and we were we were cautiously optimistic. We understood the move. I understood the move now. I understand the move now. Uh, what they were going for, especially coming off that playoffs, uh, it didn't work. And sometimes it doesn't work. A lot of, as you know, I'm not saying this to you, Fuddy, but just anyone who's like still holding that against Leon, like find me a, a front office executive who hasn't had a, a major misstep on their resume you're, you're gonna have a tough time agreed no this uh this was good uh kevin danishevsky still with us man i uh, just want to say kind of left the quentin grimes hive a minute ago but still meant a lot to me as a fan like um like the fit with Cade, even if detroit should have gotten more I don't know if Detroit should necessarily gotten more. They're they're hoping to go uh, big game hunting next this upcoming summer. I don't know what game they're hunting, but they're clearly trying to do something. And uh, Bogdanovich, like you're not, that's not a guy you exercise the team or the partial guarantee on and like wave for two million dollars. Like that's an asset. 
and they got something out of him now. So that's there's that. And then same same kind of thing with Burks. Burks expiring contract. Um, it was the notion that they were going to bring him back back on a new deal is like ridiculous. It was always ridiculous. So yeah, I do think they could have gotten a little bit more, or they should, rather they should have gotten a little bit more. But the Knicks did a nice job of squeezing them for the level of talent. Also, if you're a Knicks fan, you want to root for Quentin Grimes for another reason, which is that you want the Pistons to do well so that it further enhances the likelihood of the pick that we talked about conveying. It's uh, be good for them to be talented for Knicks interests. Completely agree. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Uh, Bowen Chen, salute KFS, longtime fan. Always love to see John's emotions after every game. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's it's special because I don't do it alone. I'm with all of you. Um, what are we going to do with that Burks point guard saga? I'm frightened. Don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. And, and this gives me a perfect excuse to uh, draw attention to a uh, tweet that uh, Benji just sent out uh, a little while ago. Burks and Bogdanovich have combined for over 300 pick and rolls as the ball handler this season. Their floor spacing is clearly a major win, and so is their ability to allow Brunson to uh, play off ball more often. DJ, Again, not Benji. Did I say Benji? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. DJ. DJ Zulo, who's like the fact that we have like multiple film guys and now with our newest edition, uh, 99 basketball doing film threads for us as well. It's like talk about uh, a uh, um, an overflow of riches. Um, I'm, I'm thinking there's a, probably a biblical verse that I should be citing there. But anyway, uh, yes, uh, DJ Zulo with that great stat. You would say your cup runneth over. I think. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, I missed that. I missed that day in Bible study. Uh, the thanks. Other, yeah. The other just real quick big thing with Burks and the the fear of point guard minutes. He spent forty percent of his time in New York the um, the bad season at the point guard spot, according to cleaning the glass. So even if he spends a significant amount of time at the point guard spot again. The amount of time that it will be will be far shorter because Brunson is going to soak up the vast majority of those minutes. So I don't feel quite as skittish because it's like, do I trust Alec Burks to get the job done leading second units in the second and fourth quarters at the start of those for like five minutes a piece? I, I do. I feel like there's a much needed um, like there's a need there, especially considering how the Knicks couldn't score in fourth quarters. They haven't been able to do it for really the last two games. Uh, so that's. Also going to be important. You get some offensive score creator and good shooting to add. The reality of the situation was there was no backup point guard available on the market who made sense from an asset management perspective in terms of what the Knicks would have had to send out to get them and what uh, they would have brought back to the team. And on that second part, what they would have brought back, I specifically, and we've been talking about this for months, you're you, what are you expending to get a again a quote unquote traditional backup point guard who you're not going to play with Jalen Brunson? Like you're not going to give up a, a ton to get that player because they're just not going to have enough value to your team to justify that outlay of assets. Um, so you kind of thread the needle. And is is point Burks backup point Burks whatever for eight, seven eight minutes a game perfect? No, of course it's not perfect, but it's 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 fine for the regular season and it'll be I think fine for the postseason as well. Brian Lest, what's going on? Brian, props to Leon for improving the roster without sh uh, showing desperation regarding the injuries. I agree with that. Potential trade partners were salivating, hoping he part with first. So maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But it was a good job by him nonetheless. Chewing on. Sub suggest suggests signing Mello to a 10-day for tonight. Thoughts? You know how much paperwork that has to be done for him to unretire? Oh yeah, that's right. We're, We're saying just one night tonight. though, but just just one night though, Andrew. I, I, just one night. I don't even care if they win. I can't watch Andrew. it once. I'm Andrew. sure they could give him five, or he could give them ten good, ten good minutes. Fifteen. What is it? Fifteen good minutes is the is the one. Yeah. Fifteen good minutes. Fifteen good minutes. I just, bet she could. I, I know this is a joke, but I'm I'm t I'm t I I took it. Dare to that's dream. Fun. Not, I know not you. To you. <laughs> it makes is a wish your heart makes allegedly. Yeah. Uh, Fred Katz, how would you use the last one to two roster spots? An experienced vet at the Quan Jeffries, Archidiaco, Archidiacono type, a Westchester guy you want to reward? That's a great question. I don't really have a obvious answer to this that that comes to mind. Um, 
That's a that's a that's a very good question. I mean, they run now how many deep? If you count Sims, that's twelve. Taj is thirteen. Mm-hmm. So they have twelve NBA players. I'll put Taj as like a half. Um, I mean, we know whoever it is is not going to get time. You know, right? I think I think we, we should ask one other person about this if possible. So we're gonna we're gonna add oh, Fred goodness. Katz after his super chat. We're gonna add him to the stage. Welcome everybody, Fred Katz. <laughs> of the Set me up, you mother. <laughs> guys. Uh, I have to say, I think I might be the first super chatter to to send in money only to just pop up on the screen anyway. I and answer I your own question. Yeah, my hair is insane. This is just the hair that I slept with. Uh, I I. If I even slept, uh, I have not showered yet today. So we should all be very happy that we're doing this over video and not in person. It's been a heck of a day. It has been a heck of a day. Um, I imagine you have a busy one ahead of you, as as do all of us. Uh, can I get you to answer your own question? I don't know the answer. That's why I sent it in. I've been <laughs> I've been sitting around thinking of a million different things. I I, I honestly. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I was just, I was just wondering specifically with Taj because they, I was thinking about Taj because if Mitchell Robinson does come back, they're going to have Sims. They're going to have Mitch. They're going to have Hartenstein. They're going to have precious. I understand that they love Taj. Tibbs loves Taj, but from a roster management standpoint, it just isn't really going to make very much sense. And so I, I just, I can't really see it being Taj, but I could see them going the direction of, maybe not like a Kyle Lowry at this point because they're kind of deep and I don't see why Kyle Lowry would want to go there when he might not mean being in the rotation at this point after they made the trade. Maybe just like a older vet who is just like on the market right now. Like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm not reporting this at all. I'm just naming someone who fits the description like Danny green or something like that. That's an I could also one. see them wanting to reward a Westchester guy and, and saying this guy works really hard and has something and, is good with the culture and knows the culture and all that. So bring him in at the end of the bench, kind of like, you know, they've, they've done with like Daquan Jeffries. I, I I don't know. I haven't asked anybody. There are other more pressing topics of the day. Um, My guess would be if there weren't a, um, like a cap hit for these minimum players that the Knicks would try to get someone who was say like a, a vet who had had several years where they could inflate the salary to flip, but it's, it doesn't really come in handy because it, it's capped at the, second year terms of service or years of service. So I, my, I agree. I look, I don't really know. My thought process here is the players that you can more easily convince to sign and then flip might be the Westchester guys because of the fact that the Knicks have shifted younger. They've mostly wanted to bring in players who are not in their thirties. Uh, I'm sure there are vets around that you could get who aren't quite like Daquan Jeffries is, I don't know if I'd call him a vet, so to speak, but he's had enough cups of coffee where he qualifies that. So anyone that they can get to agree to a non-guaranteed contract next year, but you have to figure most players on the buyout market, except for you know the Daniel House juniors of the world or any other guys like Kyle Lowry, that they would sign up for that second year either way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh someone suggested uh, Derek Rose if he gets uh, bought out by Memphis, but again, he makes, he makes a lot of money cause he's on the older side. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you could bring any of these guys in for like a minimum. I could see any of it. I honestly don't know. I can't believe that I came on just to discuss 15th man stuff. Do you want to wanna... appreciate it? How specific your contribution was like there, was there an art behind that? <laughs> Because like no. typically people will just do okay great I just, just want to know no there's Thank never you. anything purposeful about anything Fred no does. there's never anything purposeful that's absolutely true I just throw things out there I say whatever's on my mind exactly I do um, have like a legitimate question to ask the insider if we can wrap up with that we're we're done with super chats we're good great um so just like from start to finish when you got word that this is the where the Knicks were headed. Um, are you surprised that they were able to get this type of deal done or is this, has this been brewing for weeks? Do you think? I, I don't, depends on how you define brewing. Uh, I, I think, look, they, they, it's been well reported everywhere that the Knicks have been very interested in Alec Burks. And the thing with Bogdanovich was that the impression Detroit was always giving everybody was that they were, 
they didn't want to part with him if they weren't getting back a first round pick. Obviously, they ended up making a trade where they didn't get back the first round pick. From what I gather, Detroit really likes Grimes, feels really good about Grimes. And I don't know if they explicitly were like, we value him as a first round pick. But I do think in terms of the way they operated, I think they were like, okay, well, Quinn Grimes on a rookie scale deal and and we view him as the talent of a first round pick and somebody who can come in and and help and play both sides and add shooting. They've obviously been after shooting like they they're a six and 43 team that just traded a, a top 32 pick for Simone Fontecchio at 27 year old 27. Don't, don't no, take they got their seventh win last night. They're seven don't deprive them. Oh, of, the value oh, of, oh of course. Of course. How dare seven you? And 43. Seven and four. You weren't watching Pistons That's, versus Kings last night. Come you know on. what's amazing? I was watching Pistons oh versus Kings you still last forgot. night. And, That's the more impressive and, part, Jeremy, is that he actually does know they yeah. have seven wins. He just yeah. didn't remember. Yeah, I sat there, watched the whole damn thing. I watched. I watched Killian Hayes hit a buzzer beater in his final second quarter of his Pistons mm. career. It was a. It was a heck of an evening. Uh, I. I I think the Pistons, though, did value Grimes kind of as that first rounder. I think they like him a lot. They view him as part of their future now and, and something to build forward with. I, I would not be surprised if they were able to maybe come to some sort of an agreement this summer. Or, or, or I mean, maybe it's too early for that. But I, I do think the intention is like keep him around for the long term. And uh, as for Bogdanovich, I think the Pistons eventually kind of came off of that first round requirement as well. Uh, I, I'm not really surprised by it. I think this is something that really built momentum. It was discussed and, and to my knowledge, it really built momentum Wednesday night. Like I started to hear about it last night as a real growing possibility into Thursday morning. And that was partly because I think Toronto started to talk to Utah about Bruce Brown. And when they initially started Bruce Brown, started talking, started talking Bruce Brown, with Utah, a lot of those conversations were about bringing in, uh, bringing bringing in Brown to Utah, but it was also about Toronto really wanting Olenek. And I guess at some point, that those conversations morphed into another type of Olenek trade, in which they end up bringing in Agbaji and and changing things around. And, and Bruce Brown, as of now, is still in Toronto. So I, I I think it's like I think the Knicks then put their concentration there. They want guys who can shoot. They want guys who fit the culture. And and it's not it's not a surprise. They ended up with these guys. They were on the radar. So inadvertently, you answered my follow-up question, which is good because you and John have to go to the putback. Um, but my follow-up was going to be, did they pivot to bogey because things broke down in, in Toronto and they're asking price for Bruce Brown? So I, I think that's possible. I don't know for sure if that's their reason, but if you line up the timeline, that seems possible. I also think it is something that they feel like they need to do because – they are unsure about OG and Anobi's injury at this point. Yeah. And I think they made a, they made all of a sudden the calculus changed to where it was like, you want to bring in somebody who is a backup ball handler who can settle the offense when Brunson's off the floor or when Brunson's not playing for whatever reason, who maybe can play alongside him and can act as that sort of guy. And, and, and now like they're sending out one rotation player whose minutes were admittedly squeezed and they're bringing in two. So we can do the math there, right? Yeah. Like they're telling us something. Somebody who plays Boyan Bogdanovich's position might miss more time than just tonight's game. Yeah. And we don't know that for sure. Uh, but but I think there's I don't even know if the Knicks know that for sure yet, but I think there's concern and it's something they're they're preparing for. And, and with that, and with that, uh Thank you to everybody who uh, watched. Uh, thank you so much to, uh, of course, Jeremy Cohen and Andrew Claudio. And thank you to Fred, who I'm going to go and uh, look at some more and talk with some more over on the putback with Ian Bailey at uh, SNY. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We will be back with a whole bunch more. I'm obviously going live tonight after the Mavs game. And uh, I think that is it. Don't forget, give us a subscription to the channel, five-star review on the pod, and uh, and a, a nice uh, well five-star rating, uh, nice review. I think I checked all the boxes, right? Did I forget anything? You're good. Bye, everybody.